Good evening, I'm Kath Brazier and I'm delighted to welcome you here to the Royal Artillery Barracks in London and what a scene it is. I challenge you to find a better backdrop than this on such an iconic parade square and it's all for an intercompany boxing night featuring the very best from the 1st Battalion, the Princess of Wales's Royal Regiment, 1P WRR and tonight is finals night so we've got 10 tantalising bouts for your entertainment. Do stay with us here on BFBS Forces News. Here's your commentator of the evening, John Knighton. Kath, thanks very much indeed, and a very warm welcome live here to the Royal Artillery Barracks here at Woolwich, because there's a real party atmosphere going on already. We haven't even started the boxing tonight, uh, but we are looking forward to 10 terrific bouts this evening uh, for some of these novice boxers who have never boxed before. It's going to be a fantastic and a pretty awe-inspiring evening as well. It's my great pleasure to join, uh, to be joined tonight by two men who know all about army boxing. They've got it in their blood, I think. That's W02, uh, W02 Gaz Stewart and Corporal Josh Woods, who are here alongside me. Gentlemen, you have got loads of experience of events like this, haven't you? And, uh, well, what sort of a, a night can we look forward to, Gaz? Um, well, we're looking forward to a good night where uh, some people have made the final uh, just because of numbers, um, and this is their first fight in the final. Uh, a few people have got buys to the final. Uh, it's going to be it's gonna some great bouts with a decent standard. And uh, coach Gav Taylor, the main coach, has done a great job with these guys. First time they've ever stepped in. But we will see when the nerves get to them and they step in for the first time, we'll see how it goes. 
I, I mean, Josh, you know, you, you've coached at this level, haven't you? And you've obviously fought at army level as well. Have you experienced an atmosphere like this for a while? Outdoors here in front of uh, the main barracks here. No, Fantastic. I've never boxed outdoors myself. Um, I've never really seen the show outdoors myself, so I'm really, really looking forward to this. Talking to the boxers before, I just had a word from them, they're all so excited. They've got the nerves, but I know they want to get in there, they're all going to give them 100% effort in there. I am, you know, we, we've, we've got boxers who say who have never fought before, and that I think is going to be, you know, quite an intimidating atmosphere for some of them, isn't it? Who've never actually stepped into the ring. Some of them have only been what training for eight weeks. So this is a this is amazing. And anyone who can cope with an atmosphere like this, well, they must think I've got a future, maybe in army boxing. It can happen. It can happen. They can get to a very high level, uh, and this is where they start. So tonight, it's all about those that haven't boxed before. It's all about controlling those emotions. Emotions, controlling that adrenaline, not going out too fast, pacing themselves, taking a couple of shots on the gloves first and then getting into it. But you'll see them, the nerves will get to them, they'll go wild in the beginning, it will settle down and you've got some great bouts ahead. Now tell me, you know, this uh, what's at stake tonight of course is the shield for the intercompany title. How does this work? Because we've got boxers from all over uh, the uh, the various companies uh, in the Princess of Wales's Royal Regiment. So how does it work? Who's going to win tonight? Is it just simply based on the number of boxers they have in in the, in the from the companies? Yes, yeah, so we've got A, B, C, Y, and HQ company. So they all uh, enter a certain amount of boxers, get uh, points for in the prelims. Those points win in, uh, in there, moving on to the f uh, final night that we hear there. And then uh, every company that gets a win will obviously get the points, and this will earn them towards the trophy at the end. OK, we're well, just about to deliver his uh, evening yeah. message to everyone. Is uh, the... Uh, MC for this evening, who's W1RSM Mike Seymour. He's looking after things tonight as the VIPs are being led now into the ring to uh, be greeted by everyone here, led by the commanding officer, of course. And this is a very proud evening, isn't it, for everyone associated with the regiment? It's fantastic. It really does bring people together. Uh, it's a good opportunity for people to see old faces. And Colonel Nick, I know, is looking forward to this tonight, isn't he, very much? <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, this is his first company uh, boxing night that he's held, so I think he'll be very excited to see how the lads perform. And just tell us something about the ring where we are. We're obviously, we're outdoors tonight, which is in itself something very special. Um, but surrounding the ring, we've actually got... Uh, they're all army trucks, basically, and these are all vehicles that are going to be heading uh, sort of way on, de on deployment on the exercise very shortly. That's right, yeah. Uh, I think they're all due to deploy for Kosovo, and... Um They've been uh, put out today by uh, MT Platoon. Uh, they've done a great job and they've done most of the setup, to be fair. They really have. So, at the moment, I think uh, W1RSM Mike Seymour just about to make uh, his uh, intros. And we are going to have, I think, uh, very shortly the first of the boxers coming through into the ring. So, let's uh, take us through, shall we, uh, what we've got in store for you. Certainly in this uh, first level tonight, five boxing rounds to start with or five matches starting off at lightweight Lewis Colshaw and Louis Mangan will be taking to the ring followed by a light welterweight contest between private Ben Barrett and private Cameron Ebrahami Waldron followed by welterweight contest Lewis Leggett private Lewis Leggett against private Archie Flora light middleweight contest will be the fourth one of the evening with Lucas Fox against James Gent and we'll finish uh, with our middleweight contest uh, between uh, Aaron Todd and Wakalu Subulati. So that's uh, what we've got in store for the, the uh, first part. Let's let's then take us through the, the first men in the ring this evening. And we are talking about two young men, I believe, who are actually best mates. Yeah, they are the best mates. Same uh, same company. They joined the, joined the army about the same time. Uh, but I know they're, they're both trained hard. Uh, they're both competitive, so we're looking forward to a good bout here. Yeah, and also a point to note on this one, it's both their first bout. It is their first bout, you can tell. Uh, Louis Mangan is going to be in the blue corner, and Lewis Coulshaw is in the red corner. Mangan from High Wycombe, he joined the army in October 2021, and had always wanted to be a soldier, he says, since he was a kid. No previous bouts, no family history in the army, and his favourite boxer is Tyson Fury. He says... He had the chance to play football in the USA, 
but chose the British Army instead. <laughs> and who can blame him? He's Wise gotten, decision. And, it, and he also got an award, apparently, from his previous employers, JD Sports, for tackling a shoplifter. So, obviously... <laughs> That's the first I've heard of that, <laughs> but I'll be asking them this later after his bout. And I know that he's got some, uh, you know, he's going to have some fans who are going to be uh, watching from all over the world tonight, actually, as has uh, Colshaw. He's from Doncaster. He joined the army back in October 2021. His childhood dream was to join the army, and he got from his childhood boxing coach when he was, uh, when he was the coach was in the reserves. He wanted to travel and move away from the small village that he came from. He's in six platoon, no previous bouts, no family history in the military. But his older brother apparently was a boxer. Well, he so might have learned a bit. He, he certainly hurt. He certainly might have done. And just want to remind you, wherever you are this evening, we'd love to hear from you uh, tonight who are watching us live on Forces News YouTube and Facebook. Got a couple of messages already. James McDonnell uh, says, Colin Thomas, John Douglas, good evening from well, Musselburgh. Looking evening. forward to a good evening of boxing. And Bill Siru says, good evening from Edinburgh. So those of you north of the border tuning in, thanks a lot. And uh, wherever you are, you are more than welcome tonight. So Coleshaw in the red corner. I'll just say to people watching, feel free to put some comments in. Uh, obviously, keep them clean, and uh, and we'll give you a mention. So here we go with the first bout of the evening. So I don't know what to. It's always difficult to tell, isn't it, with these novice boxers? You maybe have been watching a few of them. I know you've done some work with them on the pads, haven't you, guys? Yeah, I have. Uh, I've, these two, uh, I've worked with um, uh, Cole Shaw a little bit. Um, not much to give away. Um, typical beginner boxers. They're just uh, out of range at the moment, um, and they'll look uh, to be stepping in and making contact very soon once they've felt each other out. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got a nice southpaw versus orthodox uh, about this. We'll see how orthodox will be tricky. We'll see how Mangan deals with that. Maybe a rear hand down the middle could help him a long way in this. Actually, we're going to do a little quiz question for you watching uh, later on about uh, whether you know what the origin of the southpaw is. But uh, anyway, these early moments then, and it's difficult for these lads. I mean, they are first into the ring tonight. They're best mates, and here they are punching each other. Uh, that, I've never heard of this one before. I mean, obviously, you know, friends do get into a fight occasionally, but uh, in front of what thousands of people watching on the on our forces service site and uh, amongst the, the audience here, both of them just sounding each other out or just uh, touching each other at the moment. I like what Coleshaw's doing. He's throwing that rear hand, but he's slipping at the same time. He's getting his head off that line of attack and enabling him to land that rear hand without taking a shot in return. Yeah, if you look at Mangan when he's throwing his shots, his uh, head is very much on that centre line, so he's easy to catch. Uh, once they go into the corners, uh, the cor the, uh, their corners will read these situations and give them some tactics for the second and throwing round. Nice that from Coleshaw, switching the attack, head body. Yeah, little combinations from there, just working their way through. Mangan, though, but working his way, but that was one to the head there, a, a hook and jab. And yeah, timed yeah. really well. Yeah. So Coleshaw maybe just uh, just bossing this first round at the moment. Coleshaw's really committing to these shots. We were hearing them quite loud at ringside. <laughs> Crowd just really watching this with great intensity at the moment. That was a little combination. Yeah, it's better for Mangan now. there, much Mangan better for Mangan in the last well. few seconds. Yeah, that'll give him a bit of confidence to lead him into that second round. So pretty even Stephen then in that first round. I, 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 I think edge it to red. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I think Matt Mangan just needs to get his head moving a little bit more. He's been a bit too easy to hit, but it was a good little spell for him at the end, so that should hopefully boost his comfort enough into the second round. Yeah, so they've learned, a f learned some technique. They've learned how to spar. Uh, this is different. Uh, you've got the occasion of it. You've got all eyes on them, and this is where they're really learning now between the rounds and if they can actually produce what the coach is telling them. Usually the coach is right. Uh, we just see what they can pull off. They'll probably be quite glad to get the uh, that first round out of the way, won't they? You know? Yeah, they will, especially by the looks of it for uh, Mangan there. Um, he's not struggling by any means, he's just controlling the atmosphere. You can see him looking around now, uh, not looking dead at his, uh, his coach in the corner, and this is what it's all about, he has to listen. 
So ready for then the second round. Great work from uh, Corporals Ratcliffe and Taylor in the two corners looking after their boys tonight. And straight away, both of them coming out with a bit more intensity than we saw in that first round. They're both really going for it. Best mates. This is what best mates do. I find this incredible, really. Ma Mangan's coming along with the pressure, but he's just been a bit wild. I thought he's, he's taken too many shots there and he's trying to work his way in. Yeah, if he can stay, sustain that level of attack through three rounds, that's fine, but he really has to be careful. He has to be careful with his defence as well. First time I've seen both of these because the, there was no box off uh, in the preliminaries for the uh, uh, for this weight for this lightweight category. So these two went straight into the final. Lovely, lovely shot there oh. by Cole. Really and nice it looks one like uh, yeah, Mangan's just going to take a a standing count there. It was just one to the head there. Yeah, it's sometimes when there's a succession of punches with no defence. I think uh, with their first bout. Uh, the, yeah, so he's not defending himself. Yeah. I mean, the rules are to defend yourself at all times. Um, he's not throwing anything back, and he's static. And James Battle has called an end to it. Uh, the referee, James Battle, has ended that one in the second round. He didn't want Mangan to take any more punishment. Good decision. Yeah, I, I think it was. He, he just he really wasn't intelligent. He defended himself the whole fight, and I think uh, in that corner, very very much he was being very um unpositive defense in that fair cole shaw was very accurate um very clinical with his attack throughout the fight yeah so uh, that's ended a bit more quickly than we expected uh lewis cole shaw pretty happy there not sure whether louis mangan will feel exactly the same but uh the uh, the referee james battle has called that one the referee has stopped the contest Right is the winner. So a fine win then for B Company's Lewis Colshaw. A second round stoppage. Ending this one pretty quickly. But, but I think what was really good is both of them got in there and they really gave 100%. You can see they're really both uh, trying to work on what they've been taught and uh, really uh, make success of that. And let's not forget, you know, these lads, what well, they've been boxing, what, for eight weeks. It's not a long time, is it? It's not. And uh, when somebody's had a bit more experience, perhaps somebody's took them on the pads before, those tiny things can make all the difference at this level, just with their confidence and everything. So presentations of the trophies are going to be made throughout the evening. And uh, the first one tonight is going to be made by Lieutenant Colonel Horseman, the commanding officer of three PWRR. Each bout will be uh, given a trophy. And after that, Kath will be having a chat with the boxers just to get their fitting. So now talking to Kath. Um, yeah, so congratulations, Lewis. Um, uh, good fight, um, stopped early, but what do you think you did in the ring that was right tonight? Uh, not a put pressure on him. No, a boxing fight, I can't really like the little thing. Fair play for me, I think. How difficult is it to, to fight your best friend? No, I was alright. I didn't get a few bangs and I would have been I would have been fine to be honest, but I think I did that, so I'm happy with that. I'm happy with what I did, so I'm alright. Okay, well, I'm sure you've got long careers in the boxing ring and I hope you stay friends forever. Congratulations. <laughs> well, I'm sure they'll buy each other a beer afterwards. Yeah, cracking uh, opening by bout and a really good effort uh, from both of them, considering that was their first, first bout. I think they both reacted to what the corner told them and you can't ask of anything more. No, you certainly can't. And it takes a lot of guts to go out in this ring. I mean, I think, let's not forget, these guys are, they're novices, all of them novices. And to perform in front of their peers like that, it takes an awful lot of uh, guts, doesn't it? It does, and it, and it, and it bodes really well for, for infantrymen, uh, that controlled aggression, uh, listening to a commander, the corner, uh, and going out there and doing what they're told, uh, even though they're taking incoming. I think it's a fantastic sport for the army.
So now we're going to have the uh, the second bout this evening, which is light welterweight contest between Private Ben Barrett from A Company and Private Cameron Ebrahamry Waldron, who's also from A Company. Now Barrett is a Southport, uh, yeah. and uh, Waldron Ebrahamry Waldron is a uh, uh, Orthodox. So yeah, yeah. So uh, Ebrahamry Waldron, uh, he won last year, so uh, he's got something to defend. Barrett had his first bout, as we saw in the prelims, did very, very well, very tidy boxing, working downstairs and upstairs. Um, very, very, I'm looking forward to this bout. Uh, Waldrum is the straight puncher, um, very straight down the line, and it's, it should be a good bout. Yeah, also to note with Barrett, he did, he done the company boxing last year, wasn't able to fight due to an injury. But we did see him box on Tuesday and it was a really, really good performance. He's got really good high work rate, so I'm looking to, I'm really looking forward to this bout. Now tell me, is there any advantage to having boxed in the prelims, you know, when you're coming yes. into this? Yeah, because you become more conditioned uh, and you, you work out how to pace yourself. Even if you boxed last year and you're not very experienced, you just forget that pace about handling it all. It's that stepping out in that first round, how that first round goes is a big indication of how the whole fight will go. Uh, and again, it all comes down to when they come into the corners for that second round and how they react. And that's your second time to judge. Yeah, talking to both of these earlier, I think they're really, really both really confident in their abilities in this. So I think we're going to a really competitive bout. And there's big support uh, for Ebra Harmony Waldron. Uh, from on the far side of the ring, the, the lads in the blue t-shirts obviously supporting him. Barrett is South Boy say from Portsmouth, joined the army in March of 2021 to get the security and the job that he wanted. In three platoon, A company training exercises so far in Kenya and Amman. He has no previous bouts apart from Tuesday's prelims. Uh, as we say, he was very impressive and his opponent then, Private Pierce, took three standing counts uh, before Barrett actually won on the unanimous point victory and again his favorite boxer Tyson Fury what do you know about Abraham Lee Waldron at all anything have you done any um, is, it, is it good uh, straight puncher um, uh, they're both strong lads uh, they're both both able to dish out a dig um, I don't know how much Waldron's uh, come on in the last year I've been away posted to three Peter uh, but but looking at Barrett I think it's very evenly matched well, good evening to you wherever you are this evening. Let's say hi to Mick Martin Cartwright. Good luck, lads. Hi, Mick. Hope you're well, brother. Uh, uh, David John Tozer's watching. Good evening, Toz. Dave, T Dave Tozer. Uh, Steve Bennett. Evening, everyone from Stratford upon Avon. So, boxing fans all over the world, all over the country, watching wherever you are around the forces world. It's good to have you with us tonight. These are all. Those of you watching uh, on Facebook, we're still trying, I'm still trying to make connection Let's actually on the, the our YouTube it's channel, so we'll try and do that for you a little bit later three, on. But time now then for our round. second bout of the Between night, the light welterweight contest, it's Barrett against Abraham Lee Waldron. So I think what we're going to see here is we're going to see two boxers really try and win that first round. You know, you win that first round, you're ahead. You're, you've really got that advantage because you know that the, if you win that first round convincingly, whoever the red or the blue corner is really going to be chasing to win that second round. That could open him up because he's going to be more wild trying to get that second round victory. Yeah. Yeah, we certainly saw Barrett uh, in the prelims doing that, didn't we? You know, he was really going for it. I think, I think he had his man on a standing count twice in that first yeah, round. Barrett, so it's going to be very interesting to see how these two match up with each other. Two very confident young men in the ring. It's been going to be very good for the viewers to see the difference between a first belter and a second belter. Oh. And straight away, Barrett gets in there. Yeah, really come in strong here. Both boxers, both landed a good shot so far. Really going for it. Yeah, they're definitely not concentrating on their defences. And already a count uh, from Jack McCarthy for Ben Barrett. He's taken a, a standing count already. So a really good confident start from the man in the blue vest. Was in the blue trunks anyway. Nice there from Barrett, switching the attack up and down the body. Not easy for him, of course. Both these men from A Company as you can see from the back of their vests. Both of them challenging him. That was a good punch there. Came in from Barrett. Taken well by Abraham Lee Waldron. Yeah, 
You know, Barrett, Barrett's really trying to take advantage of that southpaw. He's really leading with his, uh, his rear hand and then uh, come in with his second shot from his uh, right hand. So maybe I'd like to see him utilise uh, his jab a bit more. Both of them really giving it all in these opening moments then of the, of the, of the contest here. That's right, yeah, and a good thing to see is that they're both calm uh, when they're in the exchanges as well. Uh, they're looking for shots and they're looking a little bit now for defence as well, which is great to see. Both defending well. Barrett seems to have recovered actually pretty well from that standing count he took very early in this first round. Gets one in there. Yeah, he's definitely, he definitely recovered. Yeah, it's a little jab there. And again, gets a left hook. Both men. It does look like Walder is really Locked trying in. to look for that counter attack each time. He is, yeah, he looked quite relaxed about it. And there's the end of the first round there. Yeah. I think yeah. a very Has even to round. To Walter, yeah, I think he so. He took the standing It could count. be more even than you think. Uh, sometimes it's not the same uh, in amateur boxing. It's more for the safety of the boxers. It's not so much on it as in a pro belt. Yeah, so a, a standard eight doesn't mean, like if Red got a standard eight, it doesn't mean Blues won that round. It was just a big shot. It was only one shot. If Red landed more shots, he could he win the round. The standing eight doesn't give the uh, the opposite opponent the round. Now here's a little quiz question for you then. Southpaw, we have a southpaw in the red corner here. Southpaw obviously means you you know you're leading with your left hand. Um, but where does where does the uh, the phrase southpaw come from? Where does it come from in boxing? You do you two guys actually know the answer to that question? Well, well we got told the other day, so I, I reckon so it's probably we should put that out to the public. Let's put it out to our viewers and see whether you know where. There's no no prize or anything like that. We won't give you a pair of boxing gloves, but uh, it will be just interesting to know anyone who knows where the phrase southpaw comes from. Get anyway, your Google out. <laughs> into the second round we go, and straight away, Waldron. Uh, just like the first round, both coming out, swinging. Yeah. Both going for it. Oof. Yeah, they're both trying to win that exchange. There's real meaning on both their faces here. You can see it in their eyes. Yeah, both are really leading with that rear hand. I think I think if some one of them starts getting on the end of that jab, I oh, think I agree. Start that was a terrific round. that was a that was a that was a good punch. And a second count then for Barrett then. Waldron puts him down. Yeah, but Barrett seems alright. I think he's recovered. I think he's alright. Yeah. Beasley, got your message. Uh, we've only got one fighter in from Y Company, quite a big commitment on uh, uh, up into Flex, so uh, we just got Private O2 uh, fighting in the second part of the evening. We have. Uh, so at least at least they're going to have one point on the board or B Company tonight. Um, and with O2, you never know, do you? Anyway, they, oh, and that's uh, in down good again. Shot, good shot Another by Another good shot. Yeah, he didn't even see where that came from. He just turned away. That surely is going to be it. Um, not necessarily. No, you can take a couple of counts in a round as long as he's good to go. Oh, no. he stopped him. Yeah, well, Jack McCarthy's seen enough. And two great punches from Waldron there to put his man on the floor. So another victory for a man in a blue vest. Yeah, I think the key to that fight is, as Josh said, if one of them could have boxed nice and tidy behind the jab, I think uh, that would have turned the fight around. But great effort from both boxers. Yeah, I think uh, Barrett was just relying a bit too much on the attack. There was a, uh, it was a bit more defence from Waldron than uh, there was from Barrett. So I think that's why he was just he was he was throwing shots every time he got hit. He was he was throwing the shot, which does leave you a bit more exposed. He just needs to think a bit more about his defence. It does. Well, it was a uh, two excellent punches there from um, a man in the blue the vest. Has stopped the contest. Red is a winner. Uh, it's, it's Blue's the winner. Incorrect. Isn't it? It's got to be Blue, though, surely. Apologies. Blue is the winner. Yeah. But do you know what? It was, uh, yes, again, another two blokes. They both, I think, you know, Barrett, could it, Barrett landed the same shots at Waldron, though I think it would be the other way around. They were both 100% uh, in. Yeah. They were throwing heavy shots at each other. And it's boxing at the end of the day. That's what happens. Well, I'm sure Barrett's going to learn from that, isn't he? He's going to, you know, his, maybe his defence has got to be a bit better because he re was really going for it. Yeah. His defence was down. Yeah, that's what I mean. When you're going in, um, it's obviously Waldron's second season, so he's had a, a year to think about and process what he did last year. And I think just relaxing as you go in, uh, taking a couple of shots on the gloves and just thinking about it does you the world of good. 
So Waldron looking very confident there. Very, very confident. He actually looked confident coming into the ring. Yeah, I, I, I believe they're both, like I said before, I think they were both really confident coming to that fight. That's why we saw that both at the start of the first and second, both that heated exchange from both of them. So time then for the presentation then of the trophy to the winning boxer here. Ben Barrett receives his memento and Cameron Ebrahami Waldron receives his congratulations too. Terrific performance from him. And A Company will be pretty impressed with that tonight. And very shortly, a chance for a chat with the the two boxers. Congratulations, great fight. Um, an ultimate win for, for Blue Corner, I believe. Um, how do you believe how do you think you, you won that fight? Uh, just carrying on. It was a good fight, it was a hard fight with Barrett. Um, he definitely put up a good fight. How difficult is it when you when you serve with people and train with people um, to get up there and you know try and smash their faces? It's not hard. I mean, like, lives off to me, so it's hard, but it was good. Boys, well, really good fight, and congratulations. Keep boxing. Thank you. Well done, lads. Yeah, well done. Yeah, what we saw there: two infantry men with great fighting spirit, giving their all inside the squared circle. Anybody who's watching this and thinking, you know, the, the army's for me. What a great opportunity to really prove yourself in the, in the, the ring like this. It's uh, it's a great opportunity, and hopefully there's a, maybe some young people watching this evening are thinking, hey, I'm watching this, I could do that. Yeah, yeah, I think there will be, and it, and it encourages. Uh, it, it, it's a really good encouragement for people that enjoy combat sports to actually get involved with the infantry because it's always a platform um, for them to to do well in it. Well, the number of uh, biogs I've read actually from you know some of them are pretty short from some of the lads, but they all say I want to improve my fitness. The reason why I've taken up boxing, I wanted to try a new sport. I wanted to try something a little bit different. Well, that's what they're doing. Let's move on then, shall we? Gaz, lovely to have you. Uh, just oh, yeah. seeing your comment online. Yeah, Gary uh, Alexander, loving the comments from Josh and Gaz. Thanks for looking after me on Tuesday for the prelims. And I know the answer because oh, Gary yes. Alexander knows because he's the one who gave us the question in he the is. first place. Uh, and uh, Lewis Goetcher, Josh Woods, tearing it up on commentary, he says. So that's, uh, that's a good one. Anyway, it's time for our third contest of the evening. We're rattling through them pretty quickly, aren't we? This we are. is uh, a welterweight contest now uh, between Private uh, Lewis Leggett and Private Archie Bora. Leggett in the red corner, Bora in the blue corner. Now, Leggett in the pre... The both, we saw both of these boxes in the prelims. Yep. Um, Leggett looked very good in the early rounds against uh, Private Jide. Eventually ground his opponent down, forcing, I think, three stands counts against him and that led to a stoppage in the third round yeah um, uh, Bora I think might have a bit of a height advantage here from what I can see yeah Does this is an interesting belt I mean you've got uh, Leggett which is more the come forward fighter a bit more power and uh, Bora is a bit more on his toes uh, fights off the back foot uh, it'll make an interesting belt this one yeah Bora actually defeated Dan F's of C company uh, in the uh, in that prelim you certainly use his height advantage there if I remember rightly uh, and he won it on a split decision, so it was a, a pretty tight contest. In fact, I think it was the tightest contest of all the, the prelims that we saw, Gaz. Uh, yeah, on the yeah day. I think. Uh, yeah, it, we'll really see how it goes, and we haven't seen we haven't seen Bora really take a hard shot yet. So, uh, but we've seen Leggett take him. So it'd be really interesting to see how this turns out. And I have to give a shout out to one of my old schoolmates uh, who's watching online now, Andy Huxley. So, uh, good evening to you, mate. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, it's great to have such a. A fantastic night here in the dry here in East London in Woolwich. In front of Woolwich Barracks here, this has got to be one of the most iconic uh, settings we've ever had for a, a military sports event like this. And uh, just so looking forward to this. So Legis is of C Company and Bora is of A Company. And looking after the uh, refereeing for this one is going to be Chris Jennings. Just checking now, the gloves are okay from both the boxers. Bora from A Company is in the blue corner, as you say, and red corner is 
Lewis Leggett. Yeah, so what I think we're going to see here, we're going to see Bore really trying to use his range, that jab, the long straight shots, using that outside, moving around the ring. What we're, going to be, what we're probably going to see from Leggett, trying to close that gap. He's going to be moving his head all the time, trying to close that gap. Then when he gets in, switching that attack. Nice short shot and That's hopefully rolling, the rolling away and uh, not taking the scene any shots on, when he, on his way three, out. Two minute rounds between in the red corner and representing C Company, Brogan Leggett. And lots of support for Leggett. Yeah, and he's got a uh, call Gav Taylor, very experienced, uh, coached on the boxing, army boxing team, and ex combined services yeah, boxer himself. Yeah, yeah Gav, my coach, when well, I first came to Italian, coached me from company, battalion level, and coached me on the army. So I've got a lot of respect for Gav. Great man. Yeah, two brilliant coaches looking after their boys tonight. And this is a, a contest that I think we've really been looking forward to. We saw both of them, as I say, in the, the prelims, so we've had a bit of a view of both of them. Yeah, as they say, styles make fights. Uh, you can see they're both buzzing for it, both on their toes already, and getting ready to mix it. Let's see how this goes. Well, Steve Bennett says, great fights from all the PWR lads. Uh, should be very proud, and I'm sure they are. Let's see whether these two can make us equally proud yeah. in these early Leggett moments. really trying to take that centre of the ring, dominate this, dominate this first round. See, there is the height advantage uh, for uh, for uh, here. Yeah, I think Leggett already. You can see that he needs to close that gap with his footwork first. Work in and out, and try and work an angle if he can. I think we did accuse Leggett literally of standing back a little bit. He's like not using his height advantage uh, in uh, in his prelim. So let's. I mean, you know, he, he's just biding his time at the moment. Yeah. Oh. And, that's, That's where he wants Bora. He wants to get him up against the rope. He's too nimble on his feet. Bora just needs to keep sticking out that jab, keeping the end of the jab. Doesn't need to throw it hard, just these quick, sharp jabs out. Made a scoring punch there to Bora. But again, he's in danger of just sort of losing his balance there. Yeah, his, his footwork's a little bit over the case. Might be the nerves just a bit jittery. Hopefully, he'll settle into, it, settle into the next, uh, this round and the next few rounds after. Let's face it, all these lads are heroes amongst their peers. And all the That's great work from the man in red there. Leggett just going in there, forcing Bora onto the ropes. Bora recovers well. There we go. Looks like they've settled a little bit now. They're just thinking about what they're doing a little bit more. Picking those single shots and then the combinations should just flow uh, when they find the gaps. That's great intensity from both of them. Leggett slip it, slipping these jabs, if he can slip these jabs but then move his feet in a bit closer, it'll really help him out to try and land them shots. There's a few times just a little bit too short. It's such a family occasion tonight here for one PWRR. And that was a good little combination there from Leggett. Yeah, that's what they want the first round. Good straight punches uh, and the bent arm shots just come uh, when there's a bit of time yeah, to throw. I'll him. probably uh, edge the round to uh, leg it there in the red corner. Just a, a bit more dominant of the round, land a few more cl uh, cleaner shots. Bora just really needs to be effective with that jab. Keep it out, keep it out, and then uh, throw that rear hand when he gets the opening. Well, Carl Bethel says, Come on, C Company, cheering for them tonight. So. You've got Charlie uh, Lewis Leggett, who's just uh, in there at the moment, and another C Company man, James Gent, is coming up, or Gent is coming up in the next belt. Yeah, both like a pair of bangers, quite stiff in the, in the way that they do their, do their business. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can see a bit of toe-to-toe -to -toe coming in this one. Uh, Gent swinging with the big hooks. Uh, could get pulled for slapping, uh, but uh, Fox a little bit straighter, a little bit tidier, in my opinion, in the prelims. Yeah, we'll talk about that, obviously, because that uh, Fox is... Uh, prelim was brought to a very premature end if you remember on Tuesday but anyway back to the second round go. then here at uh, this level welterweight always such a good weight for boxers at amateur and professional level we've seen some cracking welterweight bouts and Be straight away Leggett getting in there but you can see from Leggett again just taking that centre of the ring straight away before uh, uh, Bora can move even really gets out his corner yeah, Bora there Defence down a little bit. That's it, that's where he wants him. I mean, obviously, his corner closes, closes the gap. Uh, you usually do it with side steps and gradually getting him in the corner, uh, but he's doing it just by rushing in and he's uh, he's doing the job, so can't argue. 
Yeah, Lewis Leggett almost taking Lewis Bartley, our cameraman, out there. Uh, but uh, anyway, <laughs> Lewis, our Lewis seems to have survived. <laughs> There's so many Lewis's fighting tonight. I uh, was talking to, to our Lewis earlier and uh, he was uh, a bit worried that he might end up in the ring himself. But so uh, these two, uh, good shot there. Really shot. Real time there. shot, really nice shot. And that will be surely a count. Yep. Bora just needs to be a bit busy. It's like he's, he's trying to, he's just waiting for Leggett to come in. He, he needs to be pumping that jab out, giving Leggett something to think about. Leggett's got nothing to think about, so he can, he can risk coming in with these flurries of punches. Yeah, he's got it now. He's stepping in and closing him down. Uh, you can see as he's uh, getting closed into those Not corners. That's a great rear round now. I think this is going to be another there. count. It could be, yeah. He's just getting overpowered uh, now. Lewis overwhelmed. Leggett is looking very, very confident here. I've got a feeling this is going to be allowed to carry on. But ball really now. Just really get that jab out. Really st stick on the end of that jab. K give Leggett something to think about. Yeah. Bora's just got to hang on in there now, really. And that takes an awful lot of courage as well when you've been up against it. Yeah, if you look closely as well, the uh, limb speed of Bora's punches uh, is slowed down quite considerably. That'll be, that's where the adrenaline saps you, uh, and you just lose that little bit of spite and that little bit of limb speed. Well, I've got to have to say that I think that uh, Bora was rather saved by the bell there. Yeah, I think so. So that second round definitely went to Lewis Leggett, um, and he must have a you know a big points advantage going yeah, into the last Le round. Leggett two rounds to none. That's how I'd score the bout so far. Just Bora just needs to be more busy. Really needs to be busy. Well, he's going to have uh, a chance, obviously, in this third round. A few more mentions to say. Uh, Mitch Brown, CCC Company. Oh, that chant brings back some memories, Mitch. Good evening to you. Gary Alexander, it's brilliant to see the progression of intercompany boxing since my day. I'll be watching the light heavyweight match with great interest. That's Gary Alexander. I fought there in 1989. Yeah, no, no, there, Queen, there, Queen's <laughs> Regiment uh, man himself, one of our forebearers. So it's great to have him watching. Yeah, good evening to you, Gary. It was great to meet you on. Uh, on Tuesday. So here we go then with yep. the so, third and uh, last round. If I was Blue's corner, I'd just tell him to go for it, try and stand his ground a little bit more and take the risk. Uh, and really uh, has, Leggett really has got the bit between yeah, his teeth though, hasn't he? Yeah, and Leggett just needs to be a little bit more intelligent, uh, closing the distance to get his shots off a lot more cleanly. But um, at the moment, he's stepping forward and Bora's not got much coming back. Uh, Bora fighting bravely, but I think that's going to be another standing count for Archie Bora. And I just wonder whether this might be it. He's taken the eight, and that is it. Well, uh, Bora took an awful lot of punishment there from Lewis Leggett, and I'm he not did. surprised. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of these times, it looks like a, a boxer might run out of bottle, but it's not. It's just uh, the occasion. It's uh, the inability to think clearly, not having the space and time to think clearly, and uh, that's where the experience comes yeah, in. Yeah, I think I think Bora just let Leggett just get a bit too comfortable in this. Leggett felt really no worry throwing these combination of shots. Bora just just needs to be a bit more busy, especially with that jab, keeping him at that range, keeping him busy, keeping Leggett thinking. But I think Leggett found that free will to just throw the punches he wanted. Well, maybe, maybe to be fair, Leggett didn't allow Bora to get into that contest. I mean, you know, Bora really dominated it. Uh, sorry, Leggett really dominated it. Yeah, yeah, Leggett had a great, just just like we saw um, in the pre, he had that great um, work rate, high intensity that he just brought into here and he kept, he kept that intensity, he really did, it was really good to see from him. Well, well he's uh, made a big impact then tonight, has uh, Lewis Leggett there, winning for C Company and winning this, uh, the third bout of the night. We have uh, a couple more to go before the the interval this evening. The next one is going to be a light middleweight contest, which we are looking forward to. Uh, Lucas Fox against James Gent, uh, A Company against C Company. So yeah, we're looking for a bit of a tear up there. Um, from what I've what I've seen, uh, I would say uh, they're fairly fairly evenly matched on uh, strength and power and those kind of things. Uh, we'll just see how they settle in. I think it's all going to be judged off that second round if they make it past it. That was quite quite a, about there. Um, um, a lot of support for you here. I know we're all the same, but your company very loud. Did that help? Well, they've only, they've only scored some points. Um, 
yeah, it was a good bout. Uh, took a lot of work. He's good. Um, I knew that I had to stay away from his range, so that's why I was trying to work in the inside, but I that. thought we both boxed well. Well done. And Archie, I know it's difficult to suffer a defeat, but you must be proud of yourself for, for putting yourself out there. Yeah, it was good. It was all right. It was good fun. Something to do though, isn't it, really? <laughs> Time to get on the piss now, really. Like. Yeah, great comments from both of them. And uh, I say those two are heroes now amongst their peers. And do you know what? They'll be walking back there 10 feet tall, won't they? They will be. They'll be loving it now. And now they can go back, they can have a beer and party with the mates. Well, Jamie Frampton says, setup looks great. Well done to Steve Izzard. Some legendary faces in the crowd and on the commentary desk. Not me, uh, definitely not me. Good luck to all the boxers from Paderborn in Germany. That's Jamie Frampton over there. Good evening to you, Jamie. Thank you, good evening. And uh, yeah, we're very uh, privileged to have uh, Johnson Bahari here tonight as one of the, the guests of honor. And uh, you know, uh, Johnson, you know, huge supporter of uh, military sport wherever he goes. He is, yeah, you see his face around quite a bit now. So it's time then for bout number four of the evening. We're up to light middleweight, that's 67 to 71 kilos. And we've got Private Lucas Fox from A Company coming to the fore now for Red Corner. Walk in tune, walk in tune like that, he's going to be charged up. If this is the kind of stuff he listens to on a Sunday afternoon, uh, the boy's going to be fired up. It's good stuff, good to see. Yeah, we'll see, well, uh, Fox boxed um, in the prelims on Tuesday, but that bout was it ended early just for a after clash about of 20 pace, seconds, um, uh, with uh, his opponent, George Rygate. So I know he was gutted, he wanted he wanted at least the three rounds, wanted a good uh, competition. So I think, just like Gaz said, he's going to be 100% up for this one. Looking forward to seeing it. So coming into the ring now in the blue corner is Private James Gent He's from sporting C a, Company. Yeah, sporting a beautiful moustache there. Looks yeah. like he just came straight from the Falklands. Yeah. <laughs> well, Gent is from Matlock in Derbyshire. He joined the army back in January 2021 um, for this battalion in October last year. Prior to joining the army, he worked in New Zealand for an equipment supplier for the Royal New Zealand Army. Uh, he's in 7 platoon in C Company. He's always been interested in boxing, but decided to give it a go. Uh, was impressive in his prelim against Private Johnson. Deservedly won the bout there after three rounds by unanimous points decision. I must say, this is my favourite uh, entrance music so far of the night. <laughs> yep. Well, and that moustache certainly is uh, worth passing a few pubs for, you're quite right. <laughs> so the two men coming into the ring then, Fox seen as a very promising boxer in the battalion and as he did box last year but uh, so we didn't see too much of him as you said because George Rygate uh, took a cut to the head I think it was actually a clash of heads wasn't it in the yeah, very really end. unfortunate but like this boxing that happens just unfortunate like they both really didn't get to show off the skills uh, on Tuesday but I think Fox definitely gonna be one to show off what he's learned over the, uh, the last uh, eight weeks and really put on a good performance yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Two fit, strong lads. Uh, it may end up being very physical, but at least it will be entertaining. It will indeed. So we're looking forward to that. Grant Reynolds says, fantastic setup. Well done, bout Steve and the team. The Come on, Steve. There's C a light company. middleweight contest. Well, they're representing Box over three, three in the two minute corner. rounds. In the red corner, and representing A Company, Brother Fox. Big support for Fox around the around the arena and in the blue corner representing C Company Private Gent so A Company represented once more by Fox C Company by Gent I think Fox Red Fox just Blue a, Gent here we bit go bit of a height advantage but yeah. pair of bangers going at yeah. it Let's see what happens. I know you two are looking forward to this one. <laughs> <laughs> very much so, very much. So here we go then, the first round, and straight into each other. Oh, it's frantic yeah, very stuff, fast start yeah, from both Yes, as we suspected. It's, if they survive this round, then it's all about how they handle those last two. It's frantic stuff here. This is the real street fighting, isn't it? Yeah. You know, Some lovely right hands by Fox there. 
really meeting the target. Yeah, I think you know, you know, we sort of seen Gent there, he's been wild, his shots were coming from the kitchen sink, and then Fox with a lovely rear round down the middle. So Gent takes a standing count immediately. Yeah, you can see that Gent is still swinging, so he's got uh, Fox's corner if, uh, if they make it to the second. Oh, 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 oh really, really big shot. one heck of a match. match. Yeah, I think that was what, top of the head, that oh. near the temple, maybe. It was, and he's not going to get up from that. No, he's there's probably gone. a lot that wouldn't. And that is the end of that. Well, Fox, that is a, a remarkable punch, and uh, yep. it is punch from London there. It is Lucas Fox just now coming to his feet, and yep. everybody will just take a moment to make sure that he's okay. And well, that's what happens. You that know. is it. That is the risk you take when you're a wild swinger like that. I think Fox, and he took the risk, and he's and he's come out on I top. I think Fox was re really winning the round there. He was, yeah. You know, we we seen again. He throw wild shots, but he, he does carry a lot of power. And but Fox was a lot more trying to focus on those straight shots down the middle. But like you say, one shot. I think that was what looked like it was the top of the head and uh, quite a big knockdown there. Reminds me of young Lega Mabe a few years back. Oh yeah, I remember that back in Germany. <laughs> As long as he's okay, that's the important thing. He's just being shown to everybody now to make sure he's all right. I think it's a testament to both men. They now embrace each other. But not too By much. a knockout! Not too much. Blue is the winner! I think the reason we're, we're having a lot of sausages here is everyone really is just giving that 100%. When, when you really do go for it, you know, the more punches you're thrown, we're seeing a lot of punches getting thrown in these bats. The more punches you're thrown, the more open you're going to be. And that's why we're seeing a lot of these big shots uh, uh, coming in. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of these, they're, well, all of them, they're infantrymen and all they rely on their fighting spirit. Yeah. Well, for those who regularly watch Forces Boxing on our channel here on the on BFBS and on our Forces News, and uh, YouTube and Facebook, we very rarely get these sort of bouts where you have stoppages and knockouts because the men are so, and the women as well, are, are so well matched. They are. Yeah, tonight, tonight is, it seems to be really evenly matched. I mean, some people have earned those. It's just luck of the draw, really, sometimes. Sometimes people can get a bye to the final, they've not had the experience, and you end up with a fight in the final, which is slightly swayed towards someone, but they've all been fairly evenly matched at the start. Well, for one way or another, we've not seen too much of Lucas Fox over the last few days. He, you know, he, his uh, prelim was ended because of a, a, a cut to his opponent, and now he's taken a knockout. He has, yeah, uh, and he's shown some power in this bout, and, and uh, he's been hitting the target. It's just unfortunate. Yeah, he is. Okay, James and Lucas, I mean, he's first of all, you're okay. You're still standing. Um, disappointing, I know, to, to lose a bout that way, but proud to get up there in the first place. Yeah, uh, shit happens, innit? So... <laughs> Uh, I kept my hands down, and I know he, I know he's got a hard punch. So, with my own fault, if I kept my hands up, um, I reckon I'd have made it out of the first round. No swearing, please. We're live, um, James. <laughs> congratulations. Um, must dream of knockouts like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I knew he was a technical good boxer, and but I knew I had the power, so I had to go in there. And after even after the count, you know, I had to, yeah, get back in there and come back with something strong. Come on, James. <laughs> congratulations, both of you. So well done both boxers here and it's really good to see uh, young Fox just talking at the end there because that was a pretty hefty blow he took. It, it, it was a big shot, yeah, it hit him, hit him uh, probably on the side of the top of the head uh, and uh, sometimes those temple shots uh, can really take you up. You know, when you train for eight weeks or even longer, Rather a disappointing end, though, isn't it? When it when it finishes like that. It is, but Fox had, had that had that win. However, it came in in the prelim. It, it stepped into there once already. I, probably, I think they both enjoy the occasion. And these early fights, uh, they're just learning. Well, we've come really to the almost to the halfway point then of uh, the evening so far. We only seem to have been around for a very short time, but uh, that's the way that uh, amateur boxing goes. All of the bouts have ended. None of them have, have actually gone the full distance yet, which is quite interesting. Yeah, they're demonstrating some real tiger yes, knockout power tonight, and that's good to see. OK, so now we're into middleweight territory, and this is... Uh, first of all, in Aaron the red corner... He's got Aaron, another great tash in Aaron coming as well, John. Yep. yep. I Beautiful tash. It, it is. Uh, Private Aaron Todd. You probably know a bit more about him than I do. 
Anything? No, he's... Uh, I've not taken him on the pads. I think Josh has had very little uh, to do with him, so he's an unknown entity. However, uh, Sal Baluti uh, be coming out of the blue corner in a little while. Uh, he had a, 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 a good run of it last year, uh, got to the final, but unfortunately... Um, he didn't win, but uh, hopefully this is his year. He's quite good technically. Let's see if he can last the round out. Yeah, last year with Sabaluti, he, he had really yeah, good is. technique, but he just he just lacked a little bit of the fitness. But I spoke to him uh, today, and he really said this time he's been really working on his fitness a lot more. Uh, the coach has said he's improved hell of a lot, so I'm looking forward to see what he brings. Well, I can tell you that his full name is Wakolo Enoka Jean-Claude Sabaluti. So we'll just have, we'll stick with Sabaluti, I think, uh, during yeah. the commentary. Uh, yeah, he really wants it. He sat there quite yeah. in the dressing room beforehand, totally yeah. focused. Now, this um, young man, for me, sums up Fijian soldiers. He's from Suva in Fiji, um, joined the army back in September 2019. He's a Lance Corporal now. Uh, and he served in Cyprus, Kenya and the Falklands. He's the fourth member of his family who served in the forces and he says he joined up to help his family. And that is just so typical of our Fijian it is, uh, it boys. Is. Uh, They're very, the community spirit amongst our, our Fijian brothers is amazing. One previous bout, he took up boxing to try and a new sport for the fitness aspect and also to give him more confidence. So that's what uh, this young man's all about. So we don't know too much about Aaron Todd from C Company. I did have a quick chat with him actually on Tuesday because he was uh, he was there at the, the prelims. Uh, but. Uh, and he was actually telling me most of the, the first names of the other boxers, so keeping himself to himself. But uh, yeah, he's, he's a new lad into the Italian. Jo he joined the army on the 10th of October, 20, uh, 22. The fifth but I do, I do believe we have heard some good stuff contest. from the coaches about Box his ability. Three, so I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what he brings. So Between in the red corner and representing C Company, Brother Todd. And in the blue corner, representing A Company, Lance Corporal Sabaluti. A lot of support for uh, Lance Corporal Sabaluti there. Uh, a Company seem to be going wild there. Well, we will just see whether that uh, proves justified. Uh, both of these men ready to sling it out. Ready to rumble. Absolutely. So here we go one more time then. And remember, we've got five more bouts after this, after the interval. We'll be staying around during the interval. Do not go away. We've got a, a special boxing program for you. So Lucy just trying to yeah. take a claim early on. Taking a while Tries to feel to each other out there. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Todd is going to try and lay on the pressure and Sal Blues is concentrating on his defence and his attack timing was slightly out at the beginning but it looks like uh, he's settling down a little bit yeah both men going for us a good little combination there from the fijian maybe you're watching in fiji tonight sabalusi again having some good moments in these early moments of the, the first round but todd Sabaluti just needs to watch those hands. When he's throwing those shots, he's dropping, he's dropping his hands a little bit when he's throwing these shots. Just needs to be a bit careful of that. Yeah, he did the same last year. He's just there. Uh, he's got his own style, and uh, he, he, he might uh, lose a couple of rounds because of it. Oh, that was a good one. He caught it with a hook there. Just the right hook. Yeah, I just think there's a bit of balance as well. It looks like he uh, pushed him a little bit as the hand went round, but uh, you, you'll hear it when you get a flush, flush shot. <laughs> I like what I'm seeing for Sabaluti, he is changing that jab, he's throwing the jab to body, sometimes jab to the head, so he's keeping Todd thinking on where that jab's going to land. He has got the height advantage as well, slightly, but Todd's keeping his ground, isn't he, in the centre of the ring, he's doing well with that. He is, yeah, They're both five boxers looking strong. Oh, nice lead up cut there, time nicely. Good even first round this, very close towards the end of it. It looks like uh, Todd's taken 
uh, of some blood is bleeding from his nose. Yeah, it was annoying, it was a lot more technical. I think the first time we said really trying to really utilize their box in there, They're both trying to slip, uh, throw those nice straight shots. Really, uh, really good to see there. But I think I'll edge it to uh, Blue for that round. Yeah, Sabalus just looks, you know, just. He just had a little bit more accuracy with yeah. his lead shot. And Todd's just been, being cleaned up by his corner at the moment. Dan yeah. Stewart, so, good evening, mate. Hope you're well. Yeah. So, Great boxing so far, gents. Come on, C Company. Um, he's loving it. Uh, and uh, Grant Reynolds, fantastic setup. Well done to Steve and the team. Come on, C Company. Lot, a lot of support for C Company tonight. And uh, Gordon Fotheringham just says, brilliant event. Good evening to you, Gordon. Glad you're enjoying it. I mean, what's not to enjoy in this uh, fantastic oh, setting? These here? are it's the best brilliant. events you, you get in the army. The, the boxer, the whole battalion together, cheer, cheering each other on them, watching, uh, watching the lads show the fighting spirit. So here we go then with round two. Straight away, both men setting to each other. What, what I want to see from Todd this round, really, really committing to them shots. I think yeah, Sabalu's got jumping. that rage. He, he needs to step in with his first shot, close that distance. That'll help him land that rear hand. So Sabalu again. Just some of those punches are getting through and some body punches too. The left and right combinations from him. Todd defending well though, biding his time. Sabalu, good left and a right. Made some good contact yeah. there. Good, good succession of shots there. Yeah, to Todd's just just head hiding a little bit too much. I think Sabalutti knows when he's throwing, it's coming to the head, so he knows where the shots are coming. Todd starts switching the attack. I think it will um, really help him out. No, good. Just a jab and the right hook going in. All the left hook failed to connect. Todd jabbing away. Yeah, not much lateral movement from Todd, I've noticed, as he was going back, he's just going back in straight lines, which um, he needs to be able to throw shots off his back foot or step aside. And there is some blood there, so just having to be tidied up. Paul Davey says, uh, great boxing, top night, respect for the lads, I quite agree. Referee no just, uh, clock will start once more. Nice little slip there. Uh, Sal Bluti looks a lot more relaxed than Todd at the moment. Oh. Yeah, I think Todd's uh, looking for that big one. Just a big one too. Um, he stopped working behind his jab as well, which is uh, letting him down. He, he come out in that second round uh, throwing that jab a lot more and uh, he's just stopped using it for some reason. Uh, Sal Bluti, this is, as far as I'm concerned, this is his round so far. I think that's what we've seen different. Well, I think one thing that's making different is Sabalutti switching that attack. He's keeping Todd thinking, is he going to the body, he's going to the head. But Todd just head hunting, seems most punches, he's thrown to the head. And the bell sounds. Well, I think uh, A Company is going to be happy after that second round there. Um, I don't know about you, Josh, but I think quite clearly that uh, uh, Sabalutti's. Yeah, I think it was a more uh, clear round, definitely to Blue. I thought the first was a bit more close, but still to Blue. And uh, yeah, Sabaluti definitely with the uh, second round. If you just joined us, by the way, this is a live boxing, live intercompany boxing, uh, direct from Woolwich Barracks here in East London this evening. Great to be with the Princess of Wales' Royal Regiment tonight, and my great pleasure to have uh, Gary Stewart and Josh Woods with me. Uh, these two gentlemen know as much there is to know about uh, intercompany boxing, certainly in this regiment as well, and I know they've been impressed so far with what they've seen. Gary Alexander, who's been a regular contributor to us tonight. Good evening, Gary, again. The missus is sat watching with me, as usual. She has an eagle eye and giving me pointers on this fight. Thank you, Katie. So, <laughs> Good evening to you, Katie. We'll get you along one of these days as a pundit, I think. Get a pair of gloves by the sound of it. So here we go then with the third and final round. Is this going to go the whole distance? We've not had one go the full distance yet. I, I do believe. I do believe this one will. But technically, these both yeah. of these men have really given it everything so far. Yeah. So Salbu has been. He, 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 oh, 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 he's going he's down. down. He's put him down. And that was a terrific left and right combination then from Sabaluti. Yeah, a lovely placement of the shots well. there. 
He gets up just top. Yeah, he was that's it. That, uh, it stops. Fantastic belt. belt. Really good. I mean, you can see that Todd didn't have the same skill level as Sal Blue. He probably a season less of training. But um, it was a good little fight, I thought. They were both thinking. Yeah, it was. I well. think that third round, Sabaluti really came out strong. He was up and down the body all the time. He created those. He created that opening for himself uh, for the shot to head. I, I did thought it was going to go the distance, but uh, sometimes what, we get it wrong. It's what's called the commentator's curse, gentlemen. Basically, you say it's going to go the distance, and then moments later, you get a knockout. <laughs> yeah, I was proved wrong within seconds. <laughs> that was a terrific punch, though, and he was... He was really, you know, queuing himself up for a while, wasn't he? It was uh, Bacolo Sabalusi, and he looks a very promising young fighter. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's come on a lot from last year. He stayed a lot calmer. Uh, I know he's capable of um, a bit more of a work rate, but he was conserving his energy. The referee has stopped the contest. Blue is the winner. Uh, it was definitely a, a knockout there and a great bit of work from Sabaluti who I think was clearly ahead on points anyway. So Dean E.V. Bedwell says go on Sab from A Company and uh, well you've got your wish there Dean because uh, he's made it and uh, given A Company something to really shout about at the end of this first half of boxing we're going to be taking a break very shortly before that calf is going to be just talking to the two boxers when they've received their presentation which is just coming up right now. Cracking evening so far and uh, looks like giving that award is uh, Brian Wood MC. Some great support uh, for both of the men. So the presentation is just being made. As Todd goes up to receive his memento. Hasn't Brian got lovely hair? <laughs> well done. <laughs> he's not going to disappear away just yet because he's going to be talking to Kath very shortly. And uh, Wakolo Enoka Jean Claude Sabalusi, I like to say that, rolls off the tongue pretty well. He receives his memento. And it's time for both men to have a very quick chat with Kath Brazier. Well, you were blowing out that one, um, <laughs> but um, how <laughs> it was, it, and all I'm saying is that people probably don't appreciate how hard it is up there, and um, you really demonstrated that. Yeah, well, I should think so, but I don't know what's different. It's a hard thing to do, just something about your opponent and, and what he managed to do tonight. Yeah, I mean, he fought very well. He obviously did, because he knocked me out. <laughs> Uh, very good bloke, nothing bad to say. Come on, Emma Congratulations on your win. Um, what what do you think you had a, above Private Todd there? Uh, thank you, first of all. I'd just like to thank God for this evening, for bringing me this far. Uh, yeah, Todd, I'd like to, uh, he has my respect for stepping up in the ring and thanks God uh, to do that, yeah. And um, you obviously, you have got the stamina and that's important in the ring, isn't it? Yeah, yeah this year I tried working on my stamina because last year, uh, I ended up coming short because of my uh, step, fitness wise. But yeah, this, this year I was, uh, did a lot of hard work for it there. Well, thank you. That's a brilliant way to take us into the interview. Thank you, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Great respect. Great out. Yeah. Terrific respect. And both of these men, great respect for each other. Sabaluti said he wanted to join the army to help his family. And uh, he's come here. He's now a second bout. Took up boxing to try a new sport. For the fitness aspects and to give him more confidence well that must have given him loads of confidence yeah especially um so it's time for the end then of this first half we've got five more bouts to enjoy i hope you're not going to go away because we've had a great evening so far as the sun goes down here commanding officer gives the nod and the vips are now going to leave the arena and go and enjoy their half-time break, which we're going to do very, very shortly. But just before we do, gentlemen, just your thoughts then on the, that first half of boxing. What's uh, what stood out for you in the in that? Which of the bouts stood out for you? I really, really enjoyed uh, Sabaluti's performance in that last bout, especially just from watching him uh, in the last company box. I think he come along really well. And his fitness was a lot better this time. It was really good to see. And 
I think Fox and Ghent was a really good bout as well. I've really uh, enjoyed that one as well. Both of them, but gritting, gritting their teeth, going at it. And like you said, either one of them could have landed that shot in that bout. Okay, so and, uh, Ghent was the one who uh, l landed the great shot. And Gaz, I mean, overall, you know, good standard, great Mate, standard of, uh, of uh, boxing from these, from these novices. It is a good standard. I mean, we've had the, these finals nights where people are having their first bout and they just go wild. So everything they've been taught goes out the window. Uh, they've all take, taken a decent stance. They've all tried to work off their jab from the start um, once they've settled down. Uh, we've, we've seen some good controlled aggression and we've seen some good old infantry tiger spirit. OK, gentlemen, thanks so much indeed. Don't go away because we will be back in around about half an hour's time for even more boxing. We've got uh, some great bouts uh, to look forward to in the, the higher weight categories here. But for, from me and uh, also from Gaz and uh, Josh, don't go away, as I say. We're going to stick with a lot more forces sport now and particularly enjoy some more forces boxing. of the 2023 Army Final. And what a final we've had. Diggins again, two great punches, three great punches, four great punches, and that could be enough. <laughs> support from the para of course gets in a couple of early jabs there and that's the one to the head good start from the para here not a lot between them as we approach the end of this first round nice little little combination there from the man in blue from murdoch oh, oh that's a good one that's a really good scoring punch from mason there little death left and a right but Murdoch responds it's hotting up he's really got to go for it maybe take a few risks sets about him well good reply from Murdoch Mason certainly the more aggressive of the two in these final moments of the last round here needs to be has Murdoch done enough that was a good combination from him a left and a right blue is the winner so a unanimous victory then for dylan murdoch from northern ireland both making their mark early on in this round that's a really good punch from Forrington there. Oh, and another one, a good one to the head. Forrington doing really well here. I think he's taking this first round. Another good one, another jab. And a hook in there. So here we go then. With uh, Cummins having to come back, and he has come back. He's come back all guns blazing, as we expected. But Cummings not wa waste, wasting any time. And another great punch, though, from Forrington. Got one on the head there. By unanimous decision, Red is the winner. <laughs> but really going for it straight away he's got his man on the ropes not necessarily what I expected but Cuthbert getting a couple of goes for the hook there Dolan gets one in and Cuthbert replies again Nice work from Cuthbert, putting his man under pressure. That was a good body shot, I felt that yeah. from here. <laughs> yes. Nice work from Dolan, but Cuthbert comes back at him. And again from Dolan, that was good, good work from him, from the man in blue. 
as you say, but he comes back with a great little combination for the left and the right. Again, he's getting those punches through. Lands a haymaker there, but it's defended by the man in red. And again, that left, that little left hook is just working its way through for the man in red. Again, he scores. And I think this is veering towards Cuthbert here. And certainly the, the fans away to our right agree. Those body shots are taking their toll a little bit, I think. Great he body really shot has. Cuthbert. And the referee has called for a count. And at the end of this third round, literally we're right at the end of the third round, that's absolutely crucial for the man in red. Red is the winner. Yeah, it's a unanimous win for Cuthbert. Let's make it interesting. So, Let's leaving it up a little bit, I think. Yep. And Cocker maybe senses his opportunity here. Bit of a wild flail going in from Andrews. Maybe Cocker's got this. Both men absolutely giving 100% and giving their all. But at the moment, it's Kieran Cocker who seems to have the upper hand here what can andrews do another great punch there from cocker is he turning this one around andrews has just lost his shape a little bit he's just lost his head i think he needs to get back to his boxing yeah cocker again great body punches and again the the, the more aggressive man at the moment is the man in red Is that a warning for the Reds? So both have had a warning now. You see that quite often, because yeah. normally it is a case of six and two threes, so it's probably fair enough. So that's levelled it up in terms of warnings. The, the last moments here, referee just separating them. Well, this is going to be so difficult to call. Split split decision. Blue. At the tender age of 22. Round. So these two men get set into straight away and look at Walker going for his man immediately. He's got him on the ropes in the corner. This is a sort of parachute regiment boxing you kind of expect. Uh, but uh, Lovesy survives that. Settle down a bit. Lovesy getting a couple of jibs over to the, the head. And again, that's a really good jab from him. And an uppercut. He's really rattled his man here. <laughs> nice reply from Lovesy, but Walker on the offensive. Early doors, getting those jabs in. Loves the hitting back. And again, the Walker gets one to the head. Reply from his opponent. Oh, and another one, good one from Lovesy there. And Walker really felt that. Oh, and again, Lovesy again. This is a great exchange between these two. Lovesy looks the more aggressive towards the end here. But a good punch thrown from Walker. Right and the left. Lovesy going for it. Both of these men really giving it their all now as they approach the final 30 seconds of this final round. And it's all over. Blue is the winner. And it goes to Ryan Walker by a split decision. hook there couple to the body and again 
Nice work, nice work from Marion. Drury hits back there, he's on the ropes. A really good end to that first round. And again, the right and a left. Is that left hook again? Yeah. Very effective, isn't it? Marion just jabbing away. My word, if that had connected. He's boxing really nice, Drury. I just think he's almost opting to make this a little bit more difficult than he needs to. It's lovely yeah, throwing the more shots. He's got the more oh, volume, but Drury's got that again. quality. And again, three brilliant punches there, which caught his man. And that will surely give him the round. Marion's not going away, though, is he? He's making it really tough. He is making for it tough, yeah. But it seems that Drury's happy to take the odd punch and then gives it back in good measure. But this is a great end to the fight from both of these men. Look at them. Absolutely giving it 100%. Terrific stuff. And that's the end of the fight. And smiles from both of them. Blue is the winner. And it goes to the man in blue. To Joe Drury. Sizing up his man. Straight in there goes the power up. Jones with a chance, of course, to repeat, as you say, James, what he did back in 2018. Made a confident start here against the younger man. But Farrell fighting back well here. Under a bit of pressure at the moment from Jones. Got him on the ropes. Jones is really going for it. Farrell sees off the challenge. I think with 30 seconds to go, he needs to gamble here, Farrell. You know, is the boat slipping away? He's not throwing enough. Yeah. Jones is getting stuck in and he's got him down, but it was. He feels it was below the belt. He's taking the count, though. He felt that punch there from Jones was below the belt. It was. So. End of the round. So here we go then. It's the last round. Tony Jones knows that if he can see this one through, the Parachute Regiment 2 Parrot will be victorious. In these last few moments of the round, Jones really going for him. Farrell having to defend. By unanimous points decision, Blue is the winner. It is a unanimous points decision in favour of Lance Corporal Tony Jones. Lightning strikes twice in his favour. The second time he has been responsible for a victory for two para. Paul comes calling again. I think this is a, this is a better start from Cole. He's using his straight shots. He's keeping it arranged. He's moving his feet a little bit more, allowing Unden to just fall short slightly. London again. He takes one and another and another. Really good spell from Danny Cole here. Might just be enough to give him the round. Red is the winner. And it goes to Danny Cool. Their third win of the night. I think it's just a wee, wee bit square on when he stands, I think. I think he sprays his legs, you know, he's like sort of just queuing himself up each time. Well, Lindsay knows how to win. So does Diggins, for that matter. Throwing things around, aren't they? 
super fitness on show here. Diggins getting in with the body shots. Good ones to the head as well. Sets the fans on their feet. Just a little bit of ring IQ there. Diggins didn't allow yeah. himself to, to no, he didn't. stay on the ropes too much. He'd no. walk his opponent back. He's changed the angle. He almost switched around. And so. look where he is now. He's in the ascendancy in this little section. Yeah. It's great so work from box. both men, but Diggins is really digging in here. I thought I'd get I like, I like what you did there, John. I do, I do like it. It really is. And Linty is grimacing at the moment. They're both absolutely giving it their all. They'll be on their knees if it carries on like this. But this is the last round. These are the last moments of the 2023 Army final. And what a final we've had. Diggins again, two great punches, three great punches, four great punches. And that could be enough to give Barry Diggins the victory. Red is the winner. It has gone to Diggins. He claims it by a split decision. Well, you're absolutely right, Lucy. You're absolutely right, Jay. It went right to the wire. And a presentation to the winners of the Army Inter-Union Boxing Championship, sponsored by Babcock, is made by Mr. Austin Lewis, representing Babcock, to the team captain of two para. straight in there very quickly making these early points count yeah we've got two southpaws here um so you know they certainly you know, don't get the advantage sometimes of boxing an orthodox boxer we've got Brittany doing exactly what she needs to do on the front foot she works it from from body to head just to get inside that taller range it's a picture of concentration on her face at the moment you can see and uh, Nee Brooks doing really well at the moment, holding her position in the ring, but takes one, takes another hook, and takes, and that'll be it, surely. I can't see how this is going to continue, because that's three times now that uh, Walker has caught her with the left hook and then gone for the kill. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee stopped the contest in round two. And the winner, in the blue collar, represents... Great start for Walker then. Fourth contest of tonight's nine bouts bill in this inter-services championship. Remember we've got a couple of walkovers which have gone in the army's favour and with the army already having won two tonight, this win, if it's a win for Jordan Shaw, could win the title for the army. It's a really good performance from both men. Andrews gets another left and a right. Getting through the short defence. Got one through there, did short. Scoring punch back. He's fighting back in this. Last few seconds then of this welterweight contest. Shaw really going for it, trying to get some scoring punches in. Might be too late. It's all over. And the winner of bout number four by unanimous decision. In the red corner. Well, there we go. What do we know, John? That's why we're not judges. <laughs> Is there such a thing as a dead heat in a, in a boxing <laughs> match? Unfortunately not. Someone's got to win, but I don't envy the judges. If anything's ever going to be a split decision, this one is. I cannot see this being unanimous on either side because both of them Greatly have given absolutely hooked. everything. Response to an uppercut by right. And continue to do so. This is 
There's been some terrific bouts. This is surely the bout of the night so far, Lucy. Oh, without a doubt. Just listen to the crowd, you know. What an entertaining fight. What spirit, what courage. Great display of boxing. Great military Last value. Last five seconds. Who's going to take this? These guys have absolutely won it in the ring. Both of them. What a fight. And look how they embrace each other at the end. Such mutual respect. And everybody here is on their feet and absolutely right. Everyone on their feet applauding these two men who have given absolutely everything in a brilliant, brilliant contest. Neither deserves to lose. And the winner of bout number eight by a split choice decision. Joel Hassan takes it, but my goodness me, it must have been so, so close. But now it's time for the boxers of the British Army to celebrate. Several military riders joined more than 250 bikers competing at Dalton Barracks in Abingdon, which hosted round three of the Motocross National Championships. The Oxford Moto Park is considered one of the best in the country, with a variety of race classes on show. Among the forces riders preparing his bike, W01 RSM of 156 Regiment RLC, Caleb Hicks. He's been riding since he was five years old, but with more than 30 years experience in enduro. This is his first season in motocross, a very different type of racing over a much shorter course full of jumps. Also here, Ben Jones of the Army Air Corps, who had a pretty eventful time in this Clubman MX1 class race. Oh, that was, that was hard. Oh, I crashed. I got taken out at the start. I went from dead last, I think, like 26 rings. But you did really well then to make, it, make up that, because like, it was you who got taken out, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was grass. Caleb Hicks, though, was able to keep out of trouble. Starting the day inside the top five rankings, he was hoping to go higher after fourth and eighth places in the previous day's racing on a track that's pretty familiar to him. But he was up against some top-class opposition and had to settle for two ninth finishes on day two. First year, expectations can't be too high. Um, but, you know, the competitive spirit in me is a little bit disappointed that I'm not there, you know, fighting for the podium. Uh, ninth position for that race. Championship, I'm currently four for the championship, uh, Clubman MX1. Um, so yeah, I uh, was hoping to try and boost that up to third place, especially being at you know, a home track here at, at Dalton Barracks. You know, we've had the opportunity to practice it a few times, so you know, we was expecting slightly better um, results. Yesterday I was fourth and eighth, so today ninth, you know, we're, we're going in the wrong direction. But um, yeah, all is good and plenty more to go for in the remaining rounds of the championship. Hello and welcome to Courses Sport. You've been doing all right with the tries, haven't you, yeah, last yeah. couple of seasons? Not bad. Yeah. Amy Kikay, um, as always, a real pleasure.
the build-up to the Nepal Cup final includes the impressive Kukri pattern display. Over 200 soldiers from Gurkha Company Katarik, based at the Infantry Training Center, demonstrated their skill with the short sword, synonymous with the Brigade of Gurkhas. Forged from spring steel, the machete-like knife has been carried by Gurkhas into every major conflict where the British Army has been deployed. With the Kukris safely back in their sheaths and the football underway, it was the Queen's own Gurkha Logistic Regiment who looked to slice through the Queen's Gurkha Engineers' defence early on. Ronald Rye cut his way past would-be tacklers, but his shot was well smothered by Prabesh Thapa in the QGE goal. A minute later, QGE took the lead. The defending champions ran the ball deep into their opponent's half. But with the ball only partially cleared, it fell into the path of Chet Garung, who sent his shot goalwards with a sweet half volley. Aldershot-based QOGLR were chasing only their second ever Nepal Cup title, their previous victory coming in 2007. Sandeep Garung slid home an equaliser before half-time to keep his team in the hunt for some rare silverware. Goal-scoring chances in the second half were few and far between for the evenly matched sides. Kieran Rai went close but couldn't quite curl his shot past rival keeper Janan Barung. The match went into extra time and with the contest seemingly heading to penalties, Chet Garung headed home the winner in the last minute of the extra 30 minutes. The full-time whistle was the cue for some wild celebrations and a combination of teammates and colleagues carried their two-goal hero aloft in jubilant scenes. A proud day for player and unit. Well, to be honest, um, I had an instinct uh, I would score a second goal and eventually I did, yeah, I'm very happy with that. Yeah, I mean, what's it like to score the winner in the Nepal Cup final? It is absolutely amazing. I can't even describe, I'm speechless. What do you think this means for your unit? The fact that you've come out here and retained your title? Uh, I think it's a very special day. Um, we retained our title again. Uh, it was loads of hard work. Uh, I would like to thank each and everyone uh, who supported us. I could see what it meant to your fellow soldiers because you were carried aloft at the end there. They put you on their shoulders. Uh, well. I think I'm a very special guy for them, so yeah, everyone loves me. And just finally, I, I know the emotions are still quite raw, it, it's just happened. What do you think this means to you when it all sinks in? What do you think this means to you to be the winner, to score the winner in the Nepal Cup final? Well, first of all, uh, I think, uh, I think I, I'm the luckiest guy in the regiment now. Uh, yeah, it is a special day uh, with the two special goals. Um, yeah, with their special team. So delight for QGE, who celebrate another tournament victory as one of the most successful sides in the history of the Nepal Cup. Yeah, so we're looking forward to a lot more boxing coming up very soon with the Royal Marines this time down at Linston. So that's going to be a, a great evening on the 27th of July. Hope that you can join us for that. Well, welcome back here, here to Woolwich Barracks here in uh, East London tonight, the home of the Princess Wales' Royal Regiment, of course, and 1PWR having a, a great evening so far with uh, their terrific evening. 
Gaz uh, is with me, of course, and also Josh. Enjoyed a terrific uh, first half so far. Plenty to look forward to, though, in this second half, haven't we? And obviously, these are the heavyweight boxers, but we're going to start, actually, with the, with the female boxing, with the Kate French from the Royal Signals taking on Isla Jackson from 1PWRR. You know all about her, Josh, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So, um, joined the Army not too uh, long ago. She's come into B Company. She's really fit and really well, really uh, determined young girl. She's got a great fighting spirit. She's... Uh, I wasn't uh, there for the training, but what I'm here from uh, Cortle Taylor and Cortle Ratcliffe, she's really learned quite quickly, they're saying, Re really come on really well. I've spoken to her today, she's uh, really excited for this bout. Uh, she's quite confident in, in her abilities, I think she really wants to get in there and show the battalion exactly what she's made of. Uh, with uh, Kate French, she has had a bout uh, pr uh, previous, that was in the Army Individuals, okay, so this is qu quite a decent level, so she's, she's got a bit more experience than Jackson, we'll, we'll see if that experience helps her in it, but I think we're really looking for a good clash of, of the females there. Okay, well it's great to see the, the females in action tonight, and we've also then got four more uh, for the blokes as well, light heavyweight Tom Ryan against uh, Lewis Palm uh, Palmer, Palmer Benson. Yeah, you can, you can say his name better than I can. <laughs> uh, looking forward to that one. Another Lewis in action this evening as well. It seems to have loads of them. Uh, that's going to be a good bout actually between those two at light heavyweight. Yeah, I think so. Uh, from the, from the prelims, um, uh, I think uh, I think we're in for a really really close fight there. Um, both fairly technical, bit of power. Um, I think that'll be a great bout. Then at cruiserweight, Leo O2 against Oscar Eyes. Now I've got a feeling he could get a sponsorship from a. Uh, from a, a certain uh, mobile phone company if he plays his cards right. <laughs> no, uh, he's a very avid boxer. I think he would love to box in the O2 one day, to be fair to him. He uh, he's, he does, he fought in the com his companies last year, two bouts, one victory, the prelims. Uh, very good bout uh, in his final. He uh, lost uh, on the decision. But he does a lot of his own training in his own spare time. He goes to civilian clubs. He's really trying to hone his skill. Uh, Oscar Eyes, on the other hand, we've got a lad who is experienced in other martial arts. He does a lot of Muay Thai. I believe he even gets into uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He had a great first bout in the prelims. A stoppage victory, I believe, in the third round. It's a tall uh, fighter. He can re rely, really rely on his jab and really long rear hands, whereas O2 is very game coming forward, so I think that's what we're really cracking about. And of course, O2, the only man from Y Company tonight, so uh, he's their sole uh, representative, so I'm sure there'll be a huge uh, cheer for him when he comes out into the ring. Let's move on then to the, the last two bouts are going to be heavyweight and super heavyweight. Uh, Sean Haynes against uh, Pert, uh, Pert uh, Private Pert as well. That's going to be uh, a cracker. Don't know too much about Pert, uh, but uh, I think you know a little bit more about him, don't you? Because he's, you know, he's he's been around, and so I think both of those two are going to give us a good fight. Yeah, so it'd be Pert's uh, first round. Uh, for, sorry, first bout. Uh, he didn't have. He got the bye uh, for the final. Yeah. For I've been mean, watching him on the pad. He, he looked really, really sharp. To be fair, so uh, I'm looking forward to how he does again. Ha uh, Haynes. Haynes had a good performance in the prelims. Quite a tidy boxer. So I think another gr uh, good bout. We're looking forward to there. So Brandon Pert then from A Company against a fellow A Company, Sean Haynes, and then we finish off at super heavyweight, the plus 92 kilo uh, kilogram, uh, with Jake uh, Fulis or Jack, I should say, Jack Fulis. Uh, against uh, Corporal Simon Hill. So uh, that's B Company against HQ Company as well. So another one to look forward to in the, the super heavyweight class. Okay, yeah, guys, uh, uh, few sit up. Few list box last year, um, and uh, he's come on leaps and bounds this year. Um, sort of str struggled with the technique side of things last year. Um, I've seen some good things of him uh, from him on the pads. And then Cortwell Hill is one of our SPS attachments. Uh, I think he's a power lifter by uh, his chosen sport. So plenty of power there. So we could uh, anticipate a knockout there. But um, the uh, O2 Ives is anticipated to be the fight of the night. So we're, I'm really looking forward to that one. OK, well, we big them both. We bigged all of them up. So let's hope that they, they live up to expectations. Yes, and a great shot, obviously, looking from the top, looking down, uh, as you can see, as night has fallen here in East London. So we really are under the, the spotlights now of uh, really bringing this event to life. 
outdoors. Great to have an outdoor competition. But we are now getting underway then with our female contest this evening, which we're looking forward to. And just coming into the ring now is Isla Jackson from 1PWRR. She is from Tunbridge, joined the army in November 2021. She'd had enough of school, she says, in Section 4B company and looking forward to the upcoming deployment to Kosovo. Her great grand granddad served in World War II in the Queen's Royal West Surreys, now the PWRR, so following in family's footsteps. And she's the only female infanteer in the battalion. Yeah, she's coming out to an absolute banger. This is an inter-unit, uh, this is an inter-unit one really because uh, obviously Kate Sunk, Kate French uh, from the Royal Signals and uh, a Private Jackson is one of our own uh, Tiger, so uh, let's hope she pulls it out of the bag of her good things. Uh, good uh, technical boxer, uh, Kate French tending to stand her ground uh, and wanting to go toe to toe. Let's see what this provides because I think it'll be a great contest. I think it will, yeah. Kate French from Hornsey, uh, one previous bout, joined the army in October 2019, currently works in G4 support at QMS. Two members of her family have served. Her favourite boxer is Roy Jones. Jones Jr. So, Good choice. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> lots to look forward to in this female contest. And uh, I must say, it's brilliant to see the, the the females getting in the ring and really enjoying their boxing. Yeah, I think so, so, do I, most sometimes I really enjoy female boxing over male boxing. A lot of fine with the females, they they do learn the boxing uh, quite a lot quicker. And some like most times they're a lot more technical. There's really good boxing to watch. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, it's either that or they're really game and they go toe to toe for the whole three rounds. Yep. Well, we'll see. I don't suspect we're going to get that with these two tonight. With the. Uh, Jackson, obviously, the, all the local support here, all the home support from the regiment. But Kate French, she will get a lot of respect tonight. Yeah, big respect for her. You know, she's coming in, you know, no, 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 none of her own crowd. You know, these, all the crowd is supporting Jackson. So a big up for uh, Kate French for, for getting in there and showing what she's made of. The sixth bout of the evening is a middleweight contest, boxed over three two minute rounds between in the red corner and representing the Royal Signals, Signal French. Yeah, it gets a warm round of and applause. And in the blue corner, representing B Company, 1PWR, Private Jackson. A massive round of applause for Private Jackson there. I think that's really gonna fire her up. We could be in for a bit of a treat. We could indeed. Both of these young women then, ready for it, ready to, take each other on so here we go then first round then of this uh, contest middleweight contest Isla Jackson in blue, Kate French in the black kit, but from the red corner. Yeah. Both looking clear headed. Both, of course, with the head guards. Both sounding each other out or feeling each other out, but a couple of decent scores then from. Kate French. Yeah, Kate's having a bit of success with a jab there. Yeah, just see, you see Jackson now stepping in with them shots, closing that distance. French, French found the range quite early, quite well. She's landing them shots. She had Jackson moving that head, uh, stepping in with her shot, really making them count. But back comes Jackson. Good combinations from her. Sets the supporters going. Yeah, a lot of movement from uh, Kate French there on the outside. So, uh, depending on her fitness, that might not do so well in the later rounds. But we'll see. Chris Jennings officiating in the ring for us in this opening bout of the second half here. If you were with us earlier on, you've hopefully enjoyed some cracking novice boxing tonight. But this is a really shaping up well. This, these two are really going for it. 
Uh, this is good to see, but we're both seeing both of them very headhunting. Let's see if uh, any of them are going to try and take advantage and switch that attack up and down. I think that will give whoever does that the, the opening the advantage. And how much will they be inspired, do you think, by you know the successes that we've seen from our forces women boxers? Yeah, so the amount of, the amount of women that uh, females in, in the, that progress through the army boxing are a pleasure to uh, be on the team with them. We've got Kat Karis Artin still Olympic silver medalist. We've got uh, Alana Nihil, uh, bronze in the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. We've got so girls winning ABA titles. We've got uh, we've got like Tori Willits, who's on the GB squad. Like there's so much out there for uh, the females in the army to aspire to. Absolutely right, and uh, you know the more and more of them are taking it up and having great success. But those two have done a really good job in that first round. Yeah, it's, it's been uh, it's been very competitive. Uh, it looks like uh, Kate French has been on, uh, on the back foot a little bit, but um, coming in with a, a lead right hand a little bit, and uh, Jackson trying to work off the jab and step forward. So uh, uh, I think um, I think I'll see... edge it to French that one. Yeah. So ready for the second round then. Three two-minute rounds here. Remember that quiz question we put to you a bit earlier? Where does the term Southpaw originate? Maybe you've been having a think about that. I'd like to know what you think about that one. Or maybe you just Googled it. Well, no one's Googled it so far. The combinations then coming in from Jackson. But, uh, yeah, not quite hitting the target, no. but um, the combinations are coming in. The French just confidently jabbing away at the moment. For her opponent. Great French from Hornsey. That's it, that's just her that's second it. She's hitting her while she steps in now. She's thinking about what she's doing, which is good. And being eggs on by Anna Jackson and takes account. Yeah, not a nice rear hand down, down the centre there from Jack. Stepped in with the jab and then the rear hand down. That's what she needs to do. And Jackson having the better then in, in these opening moments then of the second round. I must say, French has been quite effective with this rear hand. It's just the last two she was throw landed quite clean. A great shot from Jackson there. And French has to take. Another count. So I think what we're seeing there on that this yeah, round is uh, J Jackson really committing with these punches now. I think that's why we get no standing eights. So what she wasn't doing the first, but now in the second, really committing to them shots. Yeah. There is some blood there. And she'll really go for it now, French. She knows she's got to. To stand any chance, taking a couple of standing counts now in this second round. Yeah, Jackson's just got to keep a, a clear head and just pick her off as, as uh, Fog steps in there. Well, if she were to win this one, it'd be a very popular victory, of course, amongst the yeah. home Again, support. If she's in. And that's the end of the second round. Yeah, nicely from Jackson in that round as well. She was, she was trying to go through the body this round, not not like she was in the first head time. Then she's going to the body. Obviously, that makes uh, Kate French. She's got to think about a little bit more what's coming her way. So, just uh, quite a bit of work going on then for Kate French. She just. Uh, composes herself knows what she's got to do going into this third round yeah I, th I think we could be even I think we could go the first round to uh, French and uh, the second round quite a cl uh, clear one for Jackson um, so we could be have a very good third round here well here we go then the third and final round could these two take us the full distance we've not had that so far yet tonight Keep those messages coming in from wherever you're watching around the world. Yeah, Jackson really starting to work now. Uh, and it 
it's not going to be yeah. too long, I don't think. It looks like she's better off just holding the centre and then uh, just just picking French off when she when she comes in for the shots. Great support for her here. That will really spur her on. But French still fighting bravely here, defending herself. Yeah, both really give no but I think what's helping Jackson is just that switch, like I've been saying, the switching of the attack, just giving that uh, Jackson a little bit of an edge so far. And there's going to be another count then for another count for. I think that was more of a, French. More of a push uh, with that shot. Uh, he's ended it. Well, it's been stopped. Halfway through this final round, probably the right decision. Well, uh, I, 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 don't, I, thought, I thought French, I, I, I didn't think that would, could have been stopped there. Like, I think the, the, the ref's got hard to see some, mate. He knows his heart, he's probably made, he made the right decision. I thought maybe he probably could have gone a little bit longer, but Jackson was being a bit more dominant. The referee has stopped the contest. Blue is the winner! Yeah. Well, a hugely popular decision, of course. But congratulations to both boxers, to both women who really acquitted themselves extremely well. Yeah, really good to say. Fighting spirit from both of them. It was just nice to see from Jackson for that first round, ch changing up, uh, switching over the attack for the second or third. I really think that's what, and committing to them shots really helped to get that victory. It certainly is. Uh, both of them will deserve all the applause they get from around the arena here. This arena that's uh, really built around army trucks out here in the concourse in the main parade square here at the barracks here at Woolwich. So presentation being made, Johnson Bahari making the presentation to both of these female boxers and in fact we seem to have lost Come uh, Anna Jackson, here. I think she's been brought back. <laughs> um, Kate that must have been not only difficult against such a great opponent but yeah. also against the crowd as yeah. well, you did really well out there. Oh thank you, you can't complain when you get against someone that should burst so it's alright, it's chill. Is um is Isla someone you fought before? You know how much how many bouts have you had before? So I've had one bout before. I think I believe you've had zero. So <laughs> fucking well done. Oh, sorry, <laughs> my language. Is a reminder to <laughs> swear we are live. Um, Isla. Um, well we said it all. You know you've got a great crowd uh, support here. Your first bout. That's that's quite something. Yeah, it was an inter interesting venue for it, but. <laughs> wasn't signed up for that when I signed up last year, but there we go. <laughs> um, you've done one PWR are proud, and I'm sure the crowd here um, will continue to support you through your boxing career. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, great support for Isla Jackson and Kate French as well. Both of them lead the ring together, lead the arena together, and they will get a lot of congratulations as they both exit. Well, that was a, a terrific bout from uh, both of those. Yeah, plenty uh, to work with from uh, Jackson there. I think she's sort of, uh, I'm not sure how many bouts she's had, but um, she did work really well. You know, picked her shots, um, was learning as she went, and uh, you can't ask anymore. No, you can't. So next then, we have a light heavyweight contest. Tom Ryan from C Company against uh, Lewis Parahabenko. And this is going to be an interesting one. Try. Ryan scored a points victory over Boisel in the uh, preliminary round on Tuesday. It was that bruising contest that we saw I think, yeah. on, on Tuesday. Won the bout with three con uh, con constant, consistent rounds against a, a very tough opponent. Yeah. He's from Frimley. Ryan joined the army in October 2021. Joined the army uh, as he'd always wanted to be a soldier. No other job really interested in. So he's yeah. coming into the ring now, into the red corner. Yeah, sporting a couple of black eyes as well for yes. the prelims. Well, doesn't seem to be bothering him at all not at all i'm looking forward to this i was talking to uh, tom actually you know while he was waiting to go in and uh, he was pretty confident about how he was going to get on in the prelims didn't uh, let himself down at all yeah i think this is going to be a great fight uh, ryan being no mug as well uh, both up for it ryan was sitting pretty quiet in the dressing room uh, i sensed a bit of um 
pre-fight nervous energy, but um, again, sometimes that can work well for people, and other times it saps the energy. So we'll just see what they what they bring when they step in. Yeah, well, Paravenko from Broadstairs joined the army in February last year, took up boxing to find a new sport and improve his fitness levels. And I think uh, we've seen a bit of that. A little bit more actually on, uh, on Tom Ryan, because uh, his cousin is actually in the Royal Marines. Uh, and both his grandparents served, granddad served one in the Paras and one in the RAF. So a bit of a mixture bag a yeah. across the whole family, which is great. And he enjoys the effort and complexity of the sport and also the individuality of boxing. He says it's not a team game. When you're in the ring, you're on your own. And Isaac Cruz is his favourite boxer. So uh, he's got a bit of good choice there. And apparently he shares his birthday with his brother but there's two years between them, so they're not twins. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he is sporting a couple of black eyes because that was a, a tough bruising contest he had. Uh, yeah, he really showed his heart in that fight. And, he's, and you know, he really showed his skill to overcome that and got a really good victory. Obviously, we haven't seen uh, much uh, or anything from Palmer Henko, but as, as uh, towards the other the coaches, I've had a very um, a very good uh, words about him and uh, about his skills. So I'm looking forward to what he can bring. Between in the red corner, okay, well. representing <clears throat> C Company, Brother Ryan. Yeah, Tom Ryan from C Company and Lewis Paramenko from B Company. And in the blue corner, representing B Company, Brother Paramenko. <laughs> So, yeah, fascinating tussle ahead between these two. Yeah, two very game game boxers here, so I think we've got a very good bout. And James Battle going to be looking after this one for us as the referee. So here we go then. Ryan in red, Paramenko in the blue. And straight away, both of them setting to it. Good shot by Ryan there. Nice right hand over the top. Yeah, take him well. He looks a confident boxer, doesn't he? He's got that poise of a boxer. Going for the right and the left hooks there. Romanko defending well though, coming back. He's got the centre ground at the moment. Ryan though. The aggressive in red. Gets a scoring punch in there. But oh my god, just all watch him throw throws that draft, uh, jab. He's dropping his rear hand a little bit. And that's just yeah, that opening for Ryan. Ryan, yeah. oh, good left jab there. Romanko responds. So Ryan, maybe just slightly the upper hand so far in this first round, but difficult to tell. Romanko gets one in there. Yeah, nice Ryan straight back at him. These two really giving it something. Yeah, I can hear uh, Peromenko's uh, corner shouting high hands, and uh, that seems to be doing him well on his defence. Uh, when they're low, his head's a bit static, so he's got him caught. Peromenko's able to fr throw a few of these flurries of shot. A, a few of them are landed on the, uh, the gloves of Ryan. I think if he just drops down, a nice uh, hook to the body, I think it would be really effective for him. <laughs> but good, good comeback from, uh, from the man in blue. Ryan responds. Goes for the body. And Anko just pushing him away. Both men, good movements around the ring from both of them. Really good first round yeah, there really between good those. Bout, really good. So, uh, great stuff from both. I think Ryan started really loud, landed some really nice uh, right hands over the top. But I think Parmahenko got over those first nerves and really started to plant his feet a little bit, take a bit of control of the bout. But I think he just needs to drop down to the body a little bit, not headhunt too much. Yeah, I wonder whether Ryan obviously had a, a tough preliminary match the other day whether that will count towards the end of this one whether you know it you know. May, may do when it comes to, to, to digging in there but um, he's got over his nerves by doing that prelim bout so uh, he would have he had a successful first round I believe due to that uh, I think I'll probably edge it to blue just for he's a bit of a domination of, uh, of the bout uh, due to probably the 
the first like minute, uh, the last minute and a half of the bout. Okay, so let's uh, see what happens in round two then. If it's as good as the first round, I think we're in for a cracker. And straight away, they're both at each other. Ryan in red, Paramenko in blue. Parmahenko really needs to watch his hands when he's throwing quite wild, leaves himself quite open. Yeah, like that. Ryan just needs to be a little bit more busy, just he needs to keep the pace up. Parmahenko's fighting at quite a high pace. Ryan needs to match. Well, a good shot there, good uppercut as well. And referee just pulls them away. Let's start again. Ryan though, just beginning to take a little bit of control in this second round perhaps. And saying that, Paramenko comes back at him. Yeah, Paramenko just working that little bit harder, I think. Yeah, but he really needs to switch his attack. I think that helps him out a lot for this, uh, uh, the, this round in the next. We have a private Ryan, of course, in the ring at the moment, and a private Paramenko. And it's Ryan in the red. Really good contest so far, really enjoyable to watch. Technically, this is probably the best bout we've seen so far, isn't it? Yeah, it sometimes works that way. Sometimes you get the heavier fighters uh, with a bit more work rate than the lighter ones. Yeah, that's nice from Ryan there. He, he's got him in, got his palm goes hands up high and then going down to the body. Really good. Got him on the ropes, but it's just separated again from the James battle. Ryan, again, I think he's worked really hard in this second round so far. Manko comes back at him again. There's not going to be much left between these two at the end of if we get through to the no, third round of this. Yeah, they heard the clacker go. They both stepped it up trying to finish. finish another, another close round, another close round. Really close again. I think I'll probably give add that one to Ryan, just a few more cleaner shots. Very, very difficult to call. But of course, what do we know? Because the judges, you know, the judges could call it in a very different way, can't well, they? The judges haven't had much to yeah. do tonight, so but maybe they, they yeah. might have to do for this bout. But yeah. I won't say that again, because last time I was proven wrong. Well, last <laughs> time, yes, the, the commentary curse has struck uh, us here uh, when we said that this might go right to the distance. And none of the fights have gone to the distance yet so far, but that doesn't mean they haven't been high quality. Definitely not. Great atmosphere though here in the arena tonight. Absolutely amazing atmosphere. First time we've done outdoor boxing here on BFES for a very, very long time. And uh, hopefully it won't be the last because uh, this is, a, is just something very, very special. Yeah, hopefully other units see this and go, do you know what, we, we might try this. It's a good, good way to do it. Anyway, here comes this final round and straight away, it's the man in blue, Paramenko, who is going for Ryan, but Ryan is fighting back. Yeah, it looks Look like both corners have told him that it's even, uh, and they really need to make their mark in this round, which uh, makes for a very entertaining round. It certainly does. So there's not going to be very much left from either of these men when they finished. But showing no signs of tiring just yet. Yeah, Ryan's been Ryan. a bit more effective with his shots here. He looks quite angry, doesn't he? He's got that. Oh, he's got that. He's got that angry look on his face. They're yeah, both gritting their teeth now, really throwing the shot. Yeah, Ryan told not to slap by the uh, referee there, and that's because he's hit with the inside of his glove. So it's a front knuckle part of the glove with sufficient force in the target area, and uh, they can be quite strict on that at times, especially at this level. He's getting some jabs through there. He's definitely getting the front knuckle part in now. Manko comes back at him. Yeah, we can hear from the coach's body head. I think that for both of them, really need to stop head turn and really switch up, and that'll make the difference for either one of them. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to who works the hardest at the end of this round now. But they're both working, you know, really an incredible pace here. No, lovely, nice little inside uppercut from Ryan there. Yeah, he's, uh, he seems to be scoring the cleanest shots in this round. Yeah, two good ones Another to one. the head there. Uh, Palmer Hope really is keeping his hands high, really striking his hands up when he's throwing these shots. 
Yeah, he's fighting on pure aggression now. Oh, good shot there by Palmer here. Yeah. Ryan to that really well, really well. It was quite flush. So at last 10 now. What have they got? If they're going to... Malenko gets a butt in and what a terrific bout. Yeah, great bout, great well, Certainly the best contest of the, the night so far. Definitely, for definitely. Uh, for me, it looked like Ryan was picking off with a cleaner shot, but you never know which way the judges yeah, are going to you know, go. You, you, could, you, could give, you could probably give that Palmer Henko just for his work weight. He was probably a bit more active than Ryan, but I think Ryan landed more of the cleaner shots on the target area. Personally, I think I would go for Ryan. Um, uh, for the victory. Okay, cards on the table then from you, Gas, as well. What do you think? Yeah, I think the same at, at this stage, but you never know. Okay, well, both men are. But uh, both men deserve a huge applause for their contribution to that contest. Number seven out of the ten this evening. Both shake hands warmly with each other. By a split points decision, Red is the winner! And it is Ryan. Yeah, oh, I believe decision. that was the correct decision. I do believe that was the correct decision. Yeah, it was those clean, cleaner shots from Ryan that I think won him that bout. Yeah, and I think he continued to box, whereas uh, uh, the other guy was just, just uh, was boxing on aggression in that last bit. But the fact that it was a split decision just shows, you know, that it was so, so close, wasn't it? Yeah, we did, but what we saw at the end there was two inf infantrymen giving it all fighting spirit to the final bell. It was great to see. And I'm sure that will make them candidates maybe for the top boxer and the most gallant boxer of the night awards. Obviously, those will be coming later on, but, uh, you know, they, they, have, uh, they have both competed to such a level. And next we've got the uh, one that we were looking forward to a lot, I think, during the build-up to this second uh, match, second round tonight. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this o one. I mean, uh, and Ives. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. I mean, we um, the, the last season I coached last year, uh, I coached Y Company. Uh, they've been on Interflex, off Interflex, so uh, they've been uh, hit quite heavily on that. And uh, O2 is the only one left from support company. So I'm really rooting for him for this one. And... Uh, I'm really expecting it to be a great fight. Congratulations, guys. Um, Tom, a good win for you. Um, what do you think you had at the upper hand in that for? Don't know. Bigger shots. <laughs> nah, it hit me with some hard shots, to be fair. Like, I got rocked at one point, managed to keep in there, but best fighter in the weight division, other than me, but... <laughs> Are those eyes from tonight, or have you been boxing all week? Bit of both, bit of both. <laughs> I'm sure he contributed to... The whole face will be black and blue by tomorrow. Um, Lewis, really good bout. Um, um, congratulations, just well for getting up there in the first place. Yeah, I mean, hard fight. Next year, I'll come back stronger and hopefully rock Ryan instead. And what about this crowd here? Cheers. Thank you. All right, well done. Yeah, well, well to, to both men. It's, it's great when there's a sort of a mutual respect, shake hands at the end, you know, and uh, Ryan is very popular, isn't he, with the... Uh, with his fellow members of his company there. Both men being warmly received as they leave the ring. And uh, that was a terrific bout. So what have we got next then? We've got a cruiserweight content, uh, contest next for you between Private Leo O2 from Support Company and Private Oscar Ives from B Company. O2 lives in Hastings. He's from Hastings. He joined the army as, he said he joined the army for a laugh. I yeah, know, that's Ives. Oh, this is Ives, sorry. Yeah, I don't know too much about O2. Ives, from Hastings. I'll start the one again, shall I? We are not live after all. No, uh, Hastings is where Ives is from in the blue corner. But O2 coming in first. Maybe you know a bit more about him than I do, actually. He's yeah. a very yeah. popular man. Yeah, he started off with Rifle Company and C Company. He's now over in uh, Support Company. But like, like I said before, he's been doing a lot of his own training, his own time. The, from the year from the last company boxing to now, he's been going to Civic clubs, he's been sparring, he's been training, he's very geared up for this fight. Yeah, he looks really geared up as well, he's got that look on his face. Yeah, he wants totally it badly. 
He's mean and he's ready for the fight. Yeah, he's highly competitive he's got, and he's got a great fighting spirit. So he stands by, gets the, just gets the check then. Yeah, he was part of a very good final against uh, Headley last year. And uh, it was a very close fought uh, bout. Good technical skill from both boxers. Uh, and uh, here we've got the uh, ring walk from uh, Ives. Um, and he's rated as well. So this is going to be no walkover. Uh, evenly matched on the athletic front. And um, I think O2's just having a little bit more experience, but uh, Ives can bang as well. So Yeah, Ives got the, the stoppage victory uh, against Fuller in the, the prelims, but also with Ives, he's come from his Muay Thai background. He's had to adapt his style for boxing, which he, he struggled with a little bit at first, but he's really come into his own and he's coming to be a very nice, tidy boxer. Well, Ives, one of his claims, to, he says his favourite boxer is Sugar Ray Leonard. Good uh, choice. And he says his other claim to fame he has size 14 feet and a long jab and a long jab <laughs> and you know what they say about the size of a man's feet what do they say John big socks happy you said that mate because uh, if I'd had a couple of points I might have said something different <laughs> This is a family show, guys. This is a family show. No. Uh, but uh, Mighty C Company says Nathan JTC. I'm just having a look uh, with CCC Company. Uh, real support for C Company tonight here amongst everybody. As the cruiserweight men get into the ring. Yeah, it's going to be about, I know this is going to be a great bout. You can just almost feel it. the energy, can't you? You really can. We've got, we've got two two blo two uh, boxes here. In terrific shape, both of them. Absolutely. Taking the top off the shredded wheat, and they're both trained really hard. And it's going to be a great contact. Big smile on uh, Oscar Ives' face and Pete B Company. So he joined the army for a laugh. Well. He's got a smile on his face tonight. So whether it stays like that way is another matter. It's a cruiserweight contest. Box over three, two minute rounds. Between, in the red corner, and representing Y Company, Private O2! Huge support for O2, ripples round the arena here. And, in the blue corner, representing B Company, Private O2! And I'd imagine both of these men maybe have aspirations to take their boxing a bit further. Yeah, I think O2 definitely will. Uh, he's been so focused, like Josh said, he spent a whole year uh, going to one of the city clubs um, and I just hope that it goes well for him tonight. Okay, so here we go then. I much look forward to... Much look forward to bout. Yeah, they're coming out nice and technical to start off with. Well, I, I, was, I was really sticking with that jab at the start, trying to keep at the end of that jab. Nice head movement from O2, they're really nice slick head movement. Yeah, he went straight to the body as well, trying to bring the hands down. He's going there again, so he's working upstairs, downstairs, which is great. At this level, just for a couple of fights, that, that's, that's good drills. Yeah, you can see in the technique that Ives does have a height advantage, whether that will be in his favour. Well, yeah, he's next. reacting quickly as well as uh, as he throws the jab and O2 steps in as well. Most of the time he's stepping back and reacting quickly, so which is good. O2, big support coming from his supporters behind us, from where our commentary position is at ringside. Just see O2 just needs to step in there, he needs to close that distance. He's at, he's at the end of Ivor's jab, yeah, he's got great head movement, but to land his shots, he just needs to bring his feet in with him with his shots. O2 from Y Company, from the support company here. But Ives more than holding his own in these opening moments of the first round. O2 just biding his time. That left jab looks very, very potent. Yeah. And he's bringing that left hand down of Ives as well as he's going to the body. You notice that it's a lot lower. O2 
Ota again going in. Eyes oh, defending well. Ota is slipping these shots nicely, but if he slips and throws at the side time, yeah. he makes advantage of him uh, making eyes miss. Take takes advantage of that shot to the body and maybe come to the end. Yeah, I That's think it. Gav will pick that up and probably tell him as he comes in now. End of round one, didn't really hear the bell there. Neither of them heard the bell, I don't think. Uh, they were just trying to carry on. <laughs> yeah, good, good amount of background noise, I think. Yeah, there's a massive atmosphere here for both of these. How, how would you score that, Gaz? I would say, I would say 0-2 with that one. Uh, just simply because uh, Ives is throwing a single shot and he's not always getting them off. So he's either throwing a single shot, if it lands, he's not he's not even staying there to throw a couple more, he's just straight away again. Whereas O2 seems to be putting like a couple of phases together. Yeah, yeah. I do think Ives has landed a few cl nice clean shots though at range. It was, it was a close round. I'm probably gonna go I'm probably gonna go blue for that round. Okay, very close side, definitely either go either way, 100 percent So these and so far, very, very tight. It's a real chess game these two are playing. It is, yeah, battle of the jab. Just at the moment. Great technique again being shown by both boxers. Yeah, O2 might do well to start doubling up his jab because he's getting a reaction off the first one and stepping in harder yep. with the second. That was nice, there, exactly. Just stepping in with them shots, made the third one count. O2 again. Once yep. O2 goes to the body, he's come up straight to the head. Yeah. Same with Ives, though. Oh, he steps, steps in with these jabs, gives a nice does, hard yeah. jab. O2 will think about twice about yeah, coming in. O2 coming forward now. That's good, good stuff, good work. Couple of little O2. bursts. Yeah, that was a nice jab there, well timed. And again with a rear hand. Sometimes quite difficult to punch out a straight right like that and leave with it. Razor sharp, that left jab, isn't it, from O2? Yeah, he's starting to find his range now, O2, which is good. Coming to the body there. Yeah, and then coming back upstairs again. Yeah, O2 starting to get comfortable in there now. He's found his range, starting to get comfortable. Yeah. Eyes just needs to keep him thinking, keep him busy. Yeah. Both quite cagey, both standing off each other a little bit. It was a cagey second round. Yeah, I think, I think uh, O2 edged that round for me. So that, uh, by your scorebook, 1-1 one, one so far then. So a deciding third round ahead. Yeah, but that first round, I could see that going either way. Yeah, I, 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 I re I've read it, O2 having the first two rounds, but we'll see. And it's all about what they've got left to, to put into this round now. They're obviously conserving it a little bit, but they've also been very cagey. They don't, don't want to hit without getting hit, which is what it's all about. Yeah, we were, this bout really shows some really nice defences from both boxers. I've done some really good foot uh, foot defences, whereas O2's providing that trump defence is, is good to see. Interesting that so far Jack McCarthy's not had to intervene at all in either round. He's not had to intervene to stop them or bring them apart. A little cheeky one in there before. Uh, yeah, they're both game. Yeah. They're both game. They're both really going for it. Putting the same shot again on the way in there. This is where we're going to see the work now. Yeah, O2 really making his shots count. We're seeing Ives' head go right back, which the judge is really going to see that. Right. And Ives is cut on the nose. He's, taken, he's got some blood coming from his nose. See the look in their eyes, total concentration. Total yeah, they're focus. very alert. It's a, this is a great uh, display oh, of Nice rear round by O2 there. Nice combinations going in from O2 there. Stepping in like you said earlier, Josh. And uh, he's finding his range a little bit better as well. Again, uh, the 
referee's just going to have to, I think, just to step in. I think it's just a bit of blood. Yeah. yeah I think I think O2 just uh, apologies. I think I just needs to just step step in with that jab. O2's getting comfortable. He steps in. And made O2 think about twice about coming in with these combinations. strong and uh, I was having a, giving a really good account of, of, of himself as well yeah, it's a really nice boxing both, then, yeah. Yeah. both of these men different styles and, and it makes a great fight hello to the moment has probably just done enough I think yeah, lo lovely lovely trunk defense by you two there that's a nice body and shot again. there and again he's it I think uh, Ives needs to put on some pressure here yeah, to try and win the end of the round here. He's going to have to work a bit harder, isn't he, I think? It's about stepping in. He's, he's, ca he's cautious now. He's been caught flush a few times, and he's just been a bit cautious. That's the last 10 now. He has the pack go there. You can't blame him. O2 him. stepping in for that last 10. You can't blame him for his go. caution, I think. Great That's bar. the end of the bar. Really good bar. Really great good. Yeah, I really enjoyed again. that. A lot of skill level there from both fighters as well. Yeah, I think we've got another contender of uh, best yeah, boxer, absolutely. most gallant as well. Gary Alexander there saying, uh, asking me, uh, he wants to poach O2 from me. Great upper body work from him. Yeah, yeah. well. I think, Gary, that he might um, either end up boxing battalion or uh, going down to the army team if he's as focused and as yeah. driven as he is. He's really come on from last year as yeah, well. Yeah, he, he, he looks the sort of guy who could really go a long way yeah and the, and the great account from eyes from yourself really yeah really gritted in there it was great to see try try different things but i think o2 is a de deserved winner boy a unanimous points decision red is your winner o2 will be happy with that and also why come with their only boxer in getting the, getting the victory for their company yeah, yeah. He's flying the flag there for support yeah. company. Yeah, both benefited themselves really well. But it's uh, Leo O2 from uh, Y Company, from support company, who has taken that one on a unanimous points decision. I think there's much doubt towards the end, was there really, uh, that we were going to see that. And uh, he looks like a class act. Yeah, they both were, to be honest. I think uh, I was on the night of somebody else that had started this year. Equal athleticism, I think he would have, would have nailed it. But I think that extra year from O2 to develop has uh, put him in good stead for this season. Yeah, re really showed great skill there, O2. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to his future. I know his intentions are to get on the Army boxing team. So, Shane, if you're watching, you might have a new heavyweight there. Not a super, because that's my spot. <laughs> <laughs> The presentation's just being made now. Oscar, do you want to come back in? And um, uh, they're going to talk to Kat. Let's Kat's. chat to you first. I mean, quite about a lot of ducking and weaving from your opponent there. Do you think that's what got it for him in the end? Yeah, um, Oshu's an amazing fighter. So, you know, um, fought well, happy I fought. Um, yeah, I just want to say one more thing as well. Um, there's one person you can't be here at the moment. He's, uh, he's watching online. But uh, thank you to our, our coach, Jacob Hall. Thank you very much, mate. I love you. Thanks, Oscar. Leo, it's been a fantastic night. You finally got that side of the uh, the crowd up in gear there. Why company over there? Proud of your representation and congratulations on the win. Uh, yeah, obviously. Obviously, I've been mean, flexing for time. I haven't really taken it seriously. But I'm hoping that my career goes up, so it's the only way up. So, yeah, and just like I've said, shout out, shout out to J. Cole. Jacob Hall and um, I hope you as well. And you're proud of what one PWRR have done tonight. I mean, it's been quite a stage to, to fight on. Yes, of course. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> <here>. <laughs> thank you, Oscar. Yeah, so you, yeah. 
That's a pretty straight answer there. Yeah, a few words, but it says it all, doesn't it, really? I, you know, he's I know talking in the bit. ring. He's done his talking in the ring tonight, definitely. And he's coming over to uh, meet his supporters and his yeah. fans who are absolutely thrilled for yeah, him. Yeah, they're like, loving look at it. That. Absolutely loving it. And uh, I think he's quite enjoying hey. it, too. Yeah. He'll, he'll be he's having getting a good grabbed. Night. He'll be having a good night tonight. <laughs> Yeah, well done to Leo O2, and also congratulations to Oscar Ives. Gave us a really good cruiserweight contest there. We so have just two bouts left. Flown through, absolutely flown through. Nothing left, so let's uh, talk about the next one, which is a heavyweight contest. And we're going to have Sean, uh, Private Sean Haynes from A Company, and he's uh, up against uh, Private Perth. Boxes! What a song. Oh, Great yep. song. Yeah, I knew this was coming, actually. At, 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 uh... So, Pert coming into the ring. Cool Karma collected. Yep. With his favourite song. I hope those uh, viewers at home are doing a little dance in their yep. living room right now. Doing the little shuffle. <laughs> little shimmy by the sofa. <laughs> The old ones are the best, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, he came away with a points win over Private Riley in the box off. Haynes, uh, Sean Haynes had a, a reach advantage then, but Riley fought with great courage in that box off. Haynes eventually forced a standing count. This is going to be a fascinating matchup with uh, with Pert. Yeah, Haynes to uh, Riley come out in that prelim battle. Uh, flurries of punches on to uh, Haynes, and he really showed great composure and then working hard and uh, forcing the stoppage. But I'm looking forward to see what Pert uh, um, has got to deliver. I haven't seen much from him, but I've heard good things from the coaches. Yeah. So Pert comes around then to take his place in the blue corner. You're never quite sure what you're going to get with heavyweights, are you? you know? No, no, you don't. Uh, sometimes it's just slow, sta uh, static foot, but sometimes they're most of the li lively, lively uh, matches of the night. I think Gary Alexander, he's back with us again. Awesome match. Uh, I'd paid good money to see that fight on its own. Fantastic testimony to good hard work and dedication. Well done to both boxers, Ives and O2. Superb fight. And when Gary Alexander says that, it actually means something. Yeah, he it? knows his boxing. He's been around the game for a long time. So both men coming into the ring now then and are ready for a heavyweight contest. Yeah, I haven't seen uh, anything from Haynes in the build-up, but uh, I've seen uh, a few bits and pieces from Pitt, uh, quite static with his head movement. Um, straightforward one-two boxer, so we'll just see. What about Pert? What do we know about him? Not too much. No, he, for he quite quite effective. I think I think he likes to, to throw the short the short hooks to the to the head and the body. So we'll see if he can. Great openings to utilise it. The ninth bout of the evening is a heavyweight contest. Box over three, two minute rounds. Between, in the red corner, and representing A Company, Brother Haynes! Yeah, Sean Haynes then, in the red. And, in the blue corner, representing A Company, Brother Pert! And plenty of support for both of these men then. Business ended this competition tonight. Chris Jennings looking after things in the ring. Both men set to straight away. Yeah, quick start. And you know that heavyweights probably can't keep up this sort of pace for too long. Uh, doing really well though. Yeah. Straight away. But we saw Haynes in the box off. 
really grind his opponent down. Yeah, Hurt, but Hurt just needs to watch he doesn't gas himself out here. He started quite well, quite effective, switching the attack, but we'll see if we can keep up uh, this pace. Yeah, he's done a couple of uh, jab left hooks which have connected, which isn't an easy little combination to do. We go that left hook coming in again a few times, finding its target. He started well, hasn't he, Pert? And, and already taking a standing count is Haynes, his blooded face. Yeah, Haynes just needs to keep his composure, keep his guard up tight. Pert won't be able to keep this for the whole three rounds. Well, he'll have loads of confidence, though, from this performance so far. Yeah. Quite a bit of blood though coming from Haynes' nose. Yeah, and he's uh, he has been turning his head away on occasions as well. <laughs> nice little jab there from Haynes. Yeah. He's fighting back, isn't yeah, he? Feeling, but feeling it a little bit now, feeling that pace that he started with. Yeah. That's co courageous stuff, though, from the man in the red trunks. Oh, and he... Yeah, and I mean, it is a possibility that um, that Pitt could have blown himself out a bit as well in, for the later rounds if uh, Haynes can stay in there and he can come forward with those one-two shots. It doesn't have to be pretty, Ended but he first, could outwork it. End of that first round, a bit of work to do then. Yeah, I think, I think the round... Uh, went to Perth, but but Haynes was a bit built a cop up a little bit because he, he finished a bit strong there, landed some nice jabs. So a bit of work then, say for uh, Gavin Taylor to do on his man to so towel him down. He's got actually a cut to his left eye as well, to the top of his left eye. Just noticed that as well. So he's going to have to. Fight his way through. You can just see that little cut, can't you? Just on his left eye there, and uh, that's not going to help him. No, I just need to make sure he tries to protect that because the last thing he wants is that to open up more and then force the doctor's stoppage. But what I'm quite interested is if his perk's going to start the, this round the way he started the first round. Well, all will be revealed in the next two minutes. Haynes will feel he's got to come at his man, definitely. And as you say, has the man in the blue trunks rather blown himself out. He's leaning back and he's picking his jab a little bit more, but Haynes bringing the pressure on forwards and he's keeping his hands high, so he's protecting himself. So we'll just see how that goes. Haynes, of course, had the, uh, the prelims on the Tuesday. Kurtz was able to watch yeah. from the sidelines. Haynes keeping the pressure up, but I just, I just feel Kurtz just got a bit more of these shots here. When they're landing, we just hear a bit more uh, noise from it. Yeah, there's a lot of blood everywhere at the moment, and uh, it looks like the doctor is going to be called just to take a look at him. So the medic's just coming in to have a look at that nose, and I think the cut eye as well. I think he's good as long as the, the cut isn't big and it's not above the above the eye. Yeah. Chris Jennings just taking a look at the doctor, just just checking him out. Safety, the most important thing for these boxers. Yeah, just giving him the go ahead. He's good to go. A little bit of a breather as well, but for both boxers. Straight away, Haynes is in there on the offensive. Yeah. If you're not that technical, it's all about fitness and aggression, straight shots. Yeah, he's covering up every time uh, Pitt's throwing a shot. It's a terrific performance from both men so far, and uh, you've got to hand it to Haynes, really, because... It's gutsy. It's He's getting hit from terrific, different angles. Terrific cor uh, courage from him. He's not, not marked Pert at all so far. But he's been getting the punches in. Yeah, he's keeping that work rate a bit higher now, Holmes and Pert. Pert. Obviously from that first round flurry, slowed down a little bit. But he's been quite effective with some of these shots. Yeah. 
good, good rear hand there from Haynes. Yeah. Another one. Little bit of uh, snap gone from uh, Pitt's shots as well. Now he's getting tired. Yeah. Well, despite the, the the fact that he's uh, got a bloody face, Haynes very much in this contest still. Uh, fights back. End of the second round. Doctor might be taking another look. That round could have gone either way, you know. Yeah, yeah they, they both had their moments in that round. I think I'll edge it a little bit because they both landed some clean shots, but I think I'll just edge it for red just for being a bit uh, higher work rate, a little bit more dominant in the round. Yeah, one each. Well, if that is the case, then it's a terrifically courageous performance from him. Liam DP says, outstanding night from the battalion. Great work from Izzy and all the boxers. PWR Orange Company Boxing has come a long way and with the streaming with the webcam in the Paderborn gym. <laughs> absolutely right. But we're absolutely delighted to be bringing it to you this evening here on Forces News YouTube and Facebook channel. Great to have Gaz and Josh here as well with their expert thoughts, knowing these men as they do. Liam, good evening. Let's just see what happens then in this final round. He's got his gum shield. He's his gum shield in. That old chestnut. <laughs> so here we go then. Which of these men is going to be victorious? Pert looks pretty confident there. He does, yeah. He knows he's got a lot to fight for, but judging from the his pace at the end of the last round he could have a 35 40 seconds of uh, high pace in him and then go back to it surviving afterwards but we'll see so i think this will go down like the second round i think it'll be the the who lands who can land the cleaner shots will win them the round and haynes goes in there again Pert fights back a lot of standing off now not many shots getting thrown taking a, a mutual breather by the look of it well, i think haynes looks the more aggressive of the two he does yeah yeah he's just a bit of a static target though like the hands are only going to protect you as much as you can just needs to keep moving the move his head a little bit more. Didn't really see the shot that uh, caused that eight count, but... No, I didn't see that either. That's the second standing count that he's had to take. That could be the difference, couldn't it, I suppose? In these it two. could be, but if he can keep that this sort of pressure on to the end of the round, he could nick it. It's not pretty, but it can work when you ground the other bloke down or he's run out of energy. Certainly very courageous, and the man in the red. Yeah, last 10 now, so let's see. And well done to both of them. Trading blows. Good strong finish. That is both the of end them. of the, the contest. Yeah. Well, this is going to be very interesting, isn't it? It's going to be an interesting decision. Yeah, I think they'll go for the cleaner work of Pitt, to, to be honest. He's, even though he blew himself out a couple of times. Um, yeah, damage I'll, that was sustained and all that. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Gaz. I think, I think it could be edge, edge for the blue there. A close bout, a, a well fought bout. Yeah, but I, I believe blue will get the victory. Yeah. And I suspect that if, if uh, Pierre does win, then Haynes will be well in line for the most courageous boxer. Yeah, definitely well showed great, great heart in there. You know, he come. He had a, a bad start of the first round, but he come back just like he done in the previous fight. He kept that composure. He, he didn't stop throwing punches. He kept aggressive. So what do the judges say then? We're about to find out. The referee would like to congratulate both boxers for a great belt. <laughs> By a unanimous points decision. Blue is the winner. So unanimous decision goes in favour of Pitt in the blue corner. But Sean Haynes, I think, put up a terrific battle there. Yeah, plenty of heart, plenty of guts. Great to see. The sort of thing you want in one of your soldiers, I would say. Yeah, suggest. if you're jumping in a trench, that's exactly what you need. Yeah, they both showed, they both showed both of those qualities, so it was great, it was great to see. 
big congratulations to both. And in fact, that really applies to uh, everybody who has uh, fought this evening here at Woolwich Barracks. And uh, as those two go to receive their awards, very shortly they'll be talking to Kath Brazier as well. And uh, be interesting to see, you know, the decisions then on Boxer of the Night and the most courageous boxer. I would suggest that uh, maybe... I think uh, might have seen that in the last two fights. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe the best boxer of the night, O2, and uh, Haynes, possibly the most courageous boxer. But uh, we've still got one bout to go, so we must have jumped the gun on that one. Yeah, uh, we've got <laughs> the big guns coming in last, as always. Yeah, the big yeah. boys. Yeah, we've got... Uh, Jack Fulis and Simon Hill to come in the... Congratulations. Um, Sean, if I can come to you first, I'm going to see on your face how tough that was. Yeah, that was a lick. <laughs> I, need a, I need an alcoholic beverage. <laughs> Just talk us through the, um, you know, because it all went all the way. Um... I, don't know, I don't know what happened. I, I can't tell you. I don't know. OK, you're still standing. That's a good start. Brandon, um, congratulations on the win. Um, maybe you could tell us how that bout went for you. That went a lot harder than I thought it'd be, to be fair. Uh, he's a lot tougher than he looks. He was taking hits and then he's hitting back. And to be fair, I don't really remember what happened there. So. Well, I'll tell you what, you've made his face look very pretty, so congratulations. Right, I love you, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Well, Brandon Pitt, very confident young man as uh, he leaves the ring. Yeah, and but can I just say, if you want some cheap cosmetic surgery, just uh, pop down here for uh, a sparring night, and I'm sure that... They'll the lads oblige. will arrange it for you. They'll certainly oblige, wouldn't they? <laughs> so, we have come to the very last bout of the night here in this terrific evening of uh, intercompany boxing. And uh, we've come to super heavyweight time. Um, Private Jacques Thulis from Colchester. He joined the army for a career rather than just a job to travel and for the challenge. Rifleman in 6 Platoon B Company joined the army in March 2020. He's performed at the Edinburgh Military Tattoo. His father, a retired Lieutenant Colonel in the RLC. He fought in the prelims last year, a weight down from here, and he says he feels much fitter at super heavyweight than he does at heavyweight. So, yeah, yeah he's, he's better this year. Yeah, he's def definitely better this year. I've seen him. Josh has probably seen a bit more, but he's moving a lot better than he did last year. He That's struggled it. with coordination and bits and pieces last year, and uh, he seems to have come on a lot. Yeah, so sometimes with boxing, dropping down the weight is not always the best option, especially like last year. He probably he had to lose probably like 12, 13 kilos. Maybe it was a little bit more drained, whereas now this time the whole no, time he's been well yeah. fed, uh, well hydrated, so he probably does feel better. Well, here he comes then. Very confident walk into the ring. Yeah, and I'm going to ask him if he wants fruit with that bowl. <laughs> <laughs> well, as he makes his way into the ring. Crowd loving the tune. Yeah, absolutely. It's Jacques Jule uh, Fulis. And he'll be up against the man in the blue corner, Corporal Simon Hill, who is from Ballymena in Northern Ireland. He joined the army to see the world and followed in his brother's footsteps, who served in the Remi. No previous bouts. His favourite boxer, Mike Tyson. Yeah, he, he carries some power, just like uh, Mike Tyson, his favourite boxer. But let's, I, I hope he doesn't try to just rely on that power. I want to see him try, try and box and just land with that nice, clean, big shot. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of those uh, guys that is not that agile, so he should play to his strengths, which is his strength and power. You know, he needs to sit with probably a, quite a high guard. Uh, he'd probably take a lot on the outside of the gloves, uh, but, you know, he's going to waste a lot of energy being too technical and use that power when he really can pick a, pick a target and then fire his shots. Yeah, I think um, what we see from Fulish, using, using, throwing one to, one to two, uh, one to two, three shots, keeping on the outside, keeping Hill moving, using his footwork, moving in and out. And we'll oh. see Hill trying to close him down into the corners and then just to fire a few bombs and probably step off just to conserve it. But, you know, stranger things have happened. They could just meet in the middle and start chucking bombs at each other. And of course they will do in these opening moments, won't they? I mean, uh, even the super heavyweights will do that. 
So here we go, ready to then have the final bout of the night, which will be officiated by James Battle. Three great referees on show for us this evening. And uh, certainly for a referee to congratulate both boxers, yes. as they did in the last bout, that says an awful lot for, you know, for uh, you know, a contest, you know, amongst boxers who, you know, not experienced. Yeah, re referees don't do that all the time. You know, you've got to figure a lot of these refs are uh, repping a lot of fights, uh, bouts all, all the time. So for him it's to say that, they've obviously seen contest. something that really sticks out. Box it over does. three, two minute rounds. Between in the red corner and representing B Company, Drama Yeah. Fearless then from C Company. And in the blue corner, representing Headquarter Company, Corporal Hill. Yeah, Simon Hill. And I'd like to add the only boxer for HQ Company tonight. He is indeed, yeah. So um, I think HQ will be wanting the win. I think he's the only corporal, isn't he? We've, we've had a Lance Corporal. I think he's the only full corporal in the Red I believe so. Yeah. Blue Hill. So, here we go then, for these two super heavyweights to bring a crescendo to the night. And straight away. Big old bombs, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Front, front knuckle part of the glove. Yeah. But you can see he's It was got a that big, big shot, but it was a slap. It was great from the referee, that. He's got to cover up now. This is where they're both burn out. Bit, needs to move. Bit late. Not stand there. Well, these are novices, remember. And uh, once again, okay, he needs to be careful. Here. So we're in the first 20 seconds, and he's been caught for slapping twice. Good shot by Hill there. Yeah. Do this needs to move. Doesn't need to trade. These two going at it like uh, featherweights. He's going to find it difficult to sustain yeah. at that level of pace for that size. He'll see in a minute, they'll start sucking it in. Bit of a clash of heads there as well. A rather flailing Good around. shot there by Pulis. Yeah, he's picking his shots now. But much better than he was last season, to be fair. But he takes a left and a right from, uh, from Hill there. Once again, he's being Warned by referee battle. So it finishes work off this jab, jab and move, jab and move. Hit. The way Hill's fighting, he will uh, wear himself out. Yeah. He's very, he's, I mean, Hill's throwing power in every shot, which is what you don't do. He's made contact there with Fulis and he's now got a blooded nose. Yeah, the knife from Fulis there now trying to pick his shot. He needs to get out of that corner. And he's certainly taking a few punches though. From Hill who's really slugging it where through. So quite a bit of work then to do on Fulis at the break in this first round. Yeah, I think uh, Hill needs to be careful in his qualification or losing points. Yeah, he needs to fix that, stop the slapping. He picked up about three times now. Just, Hill needs to, you know, he needs to lower the pace. He's not going to stick at the pace that he's trying to fight on, but he needs to move that head, move that head, and then capitalise when he makes a few this miss. So, we will see what uh, happens here. Carl Bethel says, great level of boxing on display tonight. Amazing to see Woodsy. Yeah, shout out to Kai, I haven't seen him for a long time, a great man. And Gaz, hope you're well. Yeah, all good, Cole, mate. Good stuff. Good to hear from you. Yeah, Megan Thewlis, go on, brother. Uh, so we've got to Megan cheering for her brother who's in the ring right now, but he's got a bit of a blooded nose. He's just got to bide his time here, maybe, against Hill, who... He's going for it again. Yeah, just tight guard, that's what they're telling him. They told him to go for the, uh, the jab and the overhand right by the look of it. That's uh, some quite nice work from Fulis there. Yeah. His technique has definitely improved since last season. Yeah, he's still, uh, he's just, he needs to be careful he's when he's dropping, throwing these shots, dropping his hands and Hill's carrying with it. Oh, he's got a big shot. Uh, 
Hill is just sort of one of these fighters. He just goes in again and again. Just uh, seems to take uh, so much punishment. Yeah, he does. He just comes back for more. Fearless, though. That look on his eye. In his They're eye. really, really trying to step in with this jab. I think he's stepping a bit too much. And he's falling into it. She's making them harder to throw. The other shot. Both of their defences are down a little bit. Yeah, I think they'll both end up slowing down in the end. But uh, Fulis is doing some. You know, he's putting two three punch combinations together and finding the target after them. So it's good. Jab pretty much every time now, Felix. Yeah, just, just, he gets to just keep doing it. And these are obviously scoring. Good punches. rear hand on the end of the jab. Oh, oh. oh nice shot there by Hill. And Lovely uh, shot. In fact, Felix's Hewlett, gum shield's come out. Blue. So. Get done for slapping again. I'm warning you. Slapping. Warning. There's a warning for slapping. Back to the so that is clearly going to count against the man in blue. And uh, Felix will have to have his. Gum shield replaced. So a, a warning obviously uh, counts very much against uh, Hill here. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll fight, if Hill starts landing enough fight with God, he'll be a lot more effective. And that's the end of the second round. He's got so much power there. Plenty of power from Hill but a warning for slapping. Yeah, so I think, I think it'll be two two rounds to view this here. Um, but, you know, see stranger things. It's one of these that could end up in a knockout. If, you know, if, if Hill lands a punch, he could, uh, you know, put his man on the floor, couldn't well, he? Well, I think he's only got a couple of chances of pulling it off. He has to knock him out. If he's going to slap, he has to knock him out with it. Yeah, I think if he just stay tight and just work off that jab, he will see the fight through. Well, uh, mentioned for Richie Parr, says go on site, Team HQ. So, support for the man in the blue corner. Richie, hope you're well, mate. So here we go then with the final round of this intercompany boxing tonight here at Woolwich Barracks. And who is going to come out on top? Both of these men are going to go for it. But again, Hill is strong start. Yeah. Left and right, it's just flailing away, isn't it? Still needs to be careful with uh, his slap side. Yeah, he'll get pulled again for it. Fulis is giving as good as he gets, but uh, starting to get a bit tired now. So Fulis just needs to stick on the end of that jab. He's deter they're both determined to stay in there, and they're both determined to win right through to the last. It's great. They remind me of starting these. to feel it now, Hill. Yeah. Fulis needs to build up the pressure. Smart pressure. Yeah, both big old vessels going at it. Both of them taking the punches there. Yeah, he'll breathe through the nose now, he's really sucking it in. Two, three, four. He's taken the standing count and he is now cut as well. Oh, and it's been stopped. Yeah, I think well, he just wasn't. He, he, he was was just, the, the ref was just saying he was, he was tired. I think the, if he showed a bit more to, uh, that he wanted to really be in there, not not breathing like that, I think the ref would have let it carry on. But I think it was the right right call from uh, James. So it just all finished rather more quickly than we expected, I think. Yeah, yeah I, I just think. Just three rounds that one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. We were talking before, and it ended up pretty much being just a, a slugfest. And uh, I think it was just a fitness for Fulis that uh, that uh, won him that bout. But he did do some nice work with the jab and the rear hand. Well, applause for both boxers here. The referee has stopped the contest due to injury. Red is the winner. So Jack Fulis takes it for his company. Yeah. 
Yeah, it feels very, very happy of that because the company boxing last year, he lost his fight. He was telling me before, like, he really, really wants to correct that and get the win tonight, which he's done. And it was a well deserved win from him. Yeah, he's worked bloody hard by the look of it. I mean, he was quite difficult to train with his coordination and bits and pieces. And he's put his combinations together, he's put his hips into some of the shots. And uh, yeah, he's done all right. Well, Megan, I'm sure you'd be very proud of your brother there, who has uh, come through, stopping the fight against his opponent, Simon Hill, in the third round. That is the last of the bouts tonight. We will obviously not know who the intercompany champions are, but I think it's going to be either A company or B company, isn't it? I Possibly think A company have got the numbers. I mean, that's often the game. Uh, with intercompany boxing, the more people you put in, the better chance you give your company. So that creates the investment from the chain of command. Obviously, some companies have got their hands tied with commitments, so you can't—they can't always Guys, commit a full team every get season. Get together here for the interview time. Final interview tonight. Um, just Simon, just step, take a step back for me, thank you. Um, I'll come to you first. Sorry, <laughs> just so the crowd can see you. Um, come to you first. Um, wow. I mean, we're all exhausted watching that. How did it feel to be up there? Yeah, it was great, but my cardio got the best of me. Yeah, I just lift the heavy weights, loads of recovery. It's hard to keep dancing around. There was a lot of dancing there. Um, Jake, congratulations on yours. Do you think your cardio is just better off than his? Ever so slightly, but then he's, he's definitely got a hard hand. I'll give him that. Um, it's definitely a difficult win, but I really enjoyed it. Um, just because you're the last interview tonight, how much have you enjoyed this night? And the crowd have been fantastic as well. Absolutely love it. Crowd have been absolutely splendid. Um, the eight weeks of training has been really hard graft for all of us. Um, but we've had the opportunity to be able to show off our skills here today. Um, it was nine minutes of fun. It's absolutely brilliant. Loved it. And Simon, same as well. I mean, what a setting as well to fight in. Yeah, great eight weeks of training. Great training team as well. Great coaches. And really enjoyed the night. OK, you want to go and get on the Watt bike, maybe? OK, boys, thank you very much. <laughs> 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 Only Cap really Fraser could it, get away you. with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if anyone else had said that, there might have been a punch thrown. But anyway, uh, congratulations uh, to uh, to Jacques Thulis, winner of the super heavyweight title this evening, and a very gallant loser in uh, in Corporal Simon Hill. There, well, gentlemen. I know that uh, everyone here is going to be entertained fairly shortly by the Cora Drums who are going to be doing a, a live display, but that's coming up in probably um, a quarter of an hour. In fact, actually, maybe not quite so quickly. I think they are coming onto the stage right now. So I think it would be something that would be well worth watching. While we're just waiting for them, just your overall thoughts on, a, on a, what, from me, my point of view, it's been a fantastic night. Yeah, boxing. great effort from the boxers. Exactly what we wanted to see. Loads of guts there. Um, you know, there's no losers in this. Um, they've all come in and they've tried their hardest in that ring, and it is difficult. You have a blow in, and you, it's difficult to concentrate. Uh, they're both both uh, corners with chucking lever uh, at each other throughout, doing the best they can, working as hard as they can. There was nobody shirking it. It was great, great entertainment. Now, I mean, if we go right back to the beginning of the evening, you know, Lewis Colshaw and. Uh, Louis Mangan, they put up a, a really good uh, early bout for us. But the one we were really looking forward to, of course, was seeing Leo O2 and Oscar Ives. So that didn't disappoint, did it? That, that, that fight there at Cruiserweight, the best bout of the night. I think so, yeah. With Tom Ryan and, uh, and Lewis uh, Parkamento uh, second, really. Sirs, moms, ladies and gentlemen, and the viewers watching across the world, the regimental court drums. Here we go.
round of applause. Superb from the Cora drums there. Yeah, fantastic. Tash Peterson, I saw your message. Good evening to you. Well, they lead the ring now, giving us a great display in which really to end our coverage this evening, just want to say a big thanks to everyone who's uh, joined us this evening. Gary Alexander's uh, really enjoyed it. We've had, uh, I think, a lot of uh, comments from Gary this evening. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed the evening. Natasha Peterson as well, being fantastic to watch. She's really enjoyed. I'd just like to say a huge thanks uh, to Gary Stewart and uh, and to Josh Woods, who've been so joining well, us here this evening tonight. You're welcome. So You're out of a job, mate. <laughs> I certainly am. Yeah, you've definitely got <laughs> it. We're here to stay now. <laughs> the presentations are about to happen, but we're going to say a very good night to you now from uh, Woolwich Barracks. We've had a great evening's boxing. Hope you thoroughly enjoyed it from wherever you've been around the world tonight. But from each on night and on behalf of all our team here, it's a very good night from Woolwich. Thank you.